he's not here. I think it has something to do with uh, whoever was, you know, with the uh, Zoom.
All right, good morning, Council's Institute Parties. We're going to go on the record in the matter of the State of Georgia versus Khalif Adams et al. In 22 SC 183572, um, Mr. Stilwell and Mr. Botts and Mr. Shark, good morning. Mr. Williams, Mr. Steele, Mr. Adams, and Ms. Renard, good morning. All right, Mr. Kendrick and Mr. Weinstein, good morning. Good morning, morning. All right, Mr. Huey and Mr. Matthews Jr., good morning. Good morning, morning. All right, Mr. Nichols, Mr. Harvey, and Ms. Westmoreland, good morning. All right, Mr. Ryan and Ms. D. Williams, good morning. All right. All right, Mrs. Brown Smith. All right, Ms. Hilton, Mr. Atkins, and Ms. Love. Okay. And who is your legal assistant? Since, since we since we interjected introducing their, themselves now, is it Ms. Rand? Is it Ms. Randall? No, Ms. Knight. Ms. Knight. Okay. Good morning, madam. All right. Um, all our jurors present, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All right, you ready for your next with your next witness? All right, summon our jurors in, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. think so. Good. All right. I'll you. <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant Ingram. Okay. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, jury, good morning. Good morning. All right. State, call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The state call the investigator Anthony Kirkman. All right. Summon investigator Kirkman, please. 
All right, Investigator Kirkman, good morning, Matt. Sir, if you would please approach the witness stand once you get there. Before you sit down, if you would turn and face Sergeant Anger, you'll be sworn as a witness. Do you have any other testimony you need to make sure the whole truth comes out true? I do, sir. I see. Thank you. Detective Anthony Kirkman, A N T H O N Y K I R K M A N. And Investigator Kirkman, where are you employed? I am employed with the City of Atlanta Police Department, currently with the Larceny Unit as a detective. And how long have you been with the City of Atlanta Police Department? Going in my 24th year. And how long have you been with the Larceny Unit? A um, little over two years now. Prior to your time with the Larceny Unit, where have you been assigned within the Atlanta Police Department? I was sworn in 2001. I was first assigned at Zone 2, the Buckhead area. At 2007, I was promoted to Detective Investigator, synonymous in the same. Back then we were called detectives, now they call us investigators. Um, 2007, when I got promoted, I went to the Narcotics Unit. Worked in the narcotics unit from 2007 until 2012. And 2012, I was assigned to Zone 6 as a detective. Was there from 12 to, I think, around 16. Um, 16, I went to a task force with the, with the GBI. It was a Metro Drug Task Force. Um, was there for about a year. 17, I went to Zone 1 as a detective. I uh, was in Zone 1 from 17 to 21 when we, 21 or 22 when they centralized again. And since 22, I've been with the, the Larceny Unit. And you said when they centralized again, what do you mean? Um, prior to centralizing, um, Atlanta has six zones and an airport. All zones and the airport had their own detective group within that zone. Um, at different times, the detective group was responsible for uh, various amounts of crimes and what they handled, what they investigated. Um, generally, ours went all the way up from the smallest of petty theft all the way up to shootings would be handled by the individual zone detectives. Uh, when they centralized, they went back to detectives are no longer assigned to the zones. They went back to under a central umbrella where they are more specifically responsible for certain types of crimes. Um, like I am in larceny dealing with thefts. Um, there's, you know, you have your burglaries, your auto thefts, your, your homicide, your SVU, all that kind of stuff. So instead of being divvied out to zones, they all went back under headquarters, central location. And when did the zones become more centralized? In 2021 or 22, um, just a couple of years ago. And are you post-certified? I am. And were you post-certified in May of 2013? I was. Now, if you could tell the jury a little, um, if you tell the jury a little bit about your training, if you have any within, um, with any type of firearms or firearms. Sure. Like I said, I've been on going on my 24th year. Um, I've had thousands of hours of total training and probably breaking down hundreds of those hours in firearms specifically. Um, every year we have to do from between eight and 16 hours, just annual training with our firearms. Um, also when I was in narcotics and with the GBI, I did a lot of specialized training with firearms, including tactical shotgun training, submachine gun training, um, scenario based training. We go to specific training locations like the federal marshals have a a building complex that's set up like a house or apartments or they, it's removable walls so they can do all kinds of adjusting where you would, could go in and use simulations and actually train either entries or just training with, with the firearms. And during the course of your kind of firearm trainings, do you learn how to identify defects that could be considered a bullet hole? Yes. Um, do you also learn about energy and power as it relates to how um, bullets 
uh, come from the gun into a surface or into an area. Yes. Now, taking you back to May 2013, um, I believe when you talked about your history with APD, were you assigned to Zone 6 Police Department within um, 2013? May of 2013, yes, I was assigned to Zone 6. And just briefly tell the jury what area borders, um, what area encompasses Zone 6? Back in 2013. Back in 2013, Zone 6 is unique within the city because it actually involves parts of Fulton and DeKalb. Um, Zone 6 is mostly the east side of Atlanta, um, east of Piedmont Park, down over towards um, Moreland would split the DeKalb from the Fulton parts of Zone 6. Um, from the zoo over to around Boulder Crest back in 2013 was basically zone six uh, from North Avenue down to the, the city limits on the south side. And what zones bordered zone six back in 2013? Zone two would have bordered zone six, zone five, and zone three. And where would zone three have bordered um, zone six back in 2013? They would have shared. They would have. They would have bumped into each other. Zone three's eastern boundary would have been zone six's western boundary. And approximately, we're talking about streets or areas. Where where in the city would that border occur? Well, zone six is the like I said, the far east. Um, zone three would be just a little bit over from the far east, more kind of just down from downtown. Um, good landmarks, zone three would have been the zoo. Um, would have been the old Turner Field, zone three. So that area, university, that kind of, if you're familiar with the city, that that is more zone three. And would the zone six border be in and around that same area of where the zoo is on Boulevard down that side of the city? A little bit farther over, um, you know, the, the zoo's on Confederate over the, um, not far, like I said, it, it would have been close. But. Tell the jury back in, back in 2013, were you an investigator? Yes. And what were your job duties and responsibilities as an investigator with Zone 6? Back in 2013, the Zone 6 investigation would have handled everything all crimes that had been committed other than um, your murders, your rapes, that sort of thing. So I, I would have been responsible for investigating crimes from petty theft all the way up to armed robberies and people getting shot. I want to specifically direct your attention to May 13, 2013. Did you have the occasion to respond to the Zone 3 precinct? Um, on May 13, 2013. I did. And why did you respond to that location? There was a report of a citizen who walked in the Zone 6 precinct, um, later identified to me as Ms. Archulette Benning, Bennett. I'm sorry. She had walked into the Zone 3 precinct and spoke to the desk officer there and reported that she was a victim of a armed robbery and that her house was shot. Okay. When you, at the time in which you learned of this um, person walking to, walking to the Zone 3 precinct, where would you have been at that time? I don't remember exactly where I was, but I was assigned in Zone 6. So I was a Zone 6 detective. So I was advised on the radio of the situation of the walk-in in Zone 3. Okay. Where in 2013 was Zone 6 precinct? Zone, um, it was at 2025 Hosea L. Williams, and the same place it's currently located. And in 2013, where was the Zone 3 precinct? Um, 880 Cherokee the, um, at the zoo, right next to the zoo. And about how far approximately was the Zone 6 precinct from the Zone 3 precinct? Four miles. Mm -hmm. 
Now, did you eventually make it over to the Zone 3 precinct? I did. Now, why is it that you were called as a Zone 6 investigator response to the Zone 3 precinct? It, I was called because the incident occurred in Zone 6 at 980 Confederate, even though the victim was in Zone 3. The crime still occurred under my responsibility, which was Zone 6. Um, given it was reported um, as a prior crime, those types of incidents, the um, whoever, whatever zone detective in that area of responsibility would actually respond and handle the initial call. Okay, so you said a few things there. You said, although she was in Zone 3, what do you mean? She walked in the Zone, C precinct, zone 3 precinct. Now, to make the make the cry out for for the crime. Yes. You said that the incident happened at 980 Confederate Court. It did. Is it first that location in Fulton County? It is. And how far approximately is 980 Confederate Court to the Zone Three Precinct at 880 Cherokee? <clears throat> it's about a mile, a little under a mile, probably. And have you had the opportunity to look at a map um, with those two locations on it in preparation for your testimony here today? I have. Okay. Your Honor, permission to approach? Have you shown that to the defense counsel's already? Yes, they were getting to the top of that. We showed it to the Yes, you may have permission for it. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 26 double A. Tell me, or Alpha Alpha, tell me if you recognize 26 Alpha Alpha. This is a printout of either Google Maps or Street Maps with the outline between um, Trestle Tree Apartments, which is 980 Confederate, to 880 Cherokee Avenue, which was the Zone 3 precinct back in 2013. And um, looking at this, that a fair accurate depiction of the distance between 980 Confederate Court, also that's Trestle Tree Village Apartments, and um, 880 Cherokee Avenue, which was the Zone 3 precinct in 2013. It is. You're right. This time the state would like to tender face exhibit 26 um, Alpha Alpha into evidence. Any objection to states 26 Alpha Alpha? No, no objection. All right. It's admitted, maybe published as you see fit. Here's the zoo that is on zone three precinct right here at 880 Cherokee Avenue. And where is the Trestle Tree uh, Park zone of 980 Confederate This United back in 2013 was called Confederate Court. And this is 980, was 980 Confederate Court, which is Trestle Tree Apartments. And um, <laughs> if you can tell from this map, we talked earlier. Looking back um, from at this map, are you able to show the boundary of what was on three and what was on six from this map? Is it a rough boundary area? All this would be zone three, even back then. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. This is on, back then that was on six. All this being what, uh, detective? And where, what streets are you I'm sorry. to one of that time? Back in May 2013, um, around the zoo would have been around the border. Um, this eastern side being zone six. And is that the eastern side of United Avenue on this map? It's the eastern side of Boulevard, what I'm pointing out. Okay. So Boulevard have been a general... From my recollection, it's been 
been a few years. Boulevard would have been about the a hard boundary between six and three. Okay. So everything to the left of Boulevard would be zone three. Mm -hmm. Everything to the right of Boulevard would have been um, zone six. Correct. Okay. Um, and approximately, what is the distance between the Trusted Tree Village and 880 Cherokee Avenue? Um, between point nine on this map, on this picture, which is about outright, I said about a mile. Okay. And back in 2013, what was close, which precinct was closer to the Trusted Tree Village? Um, the Zone 3 precinct at 880 Cherokee or the Zone 6 precinct at Hosea L. Williams? Zone three would have been much closer okay. to Trestle Tree. That's it. About less than a mile, you're probably looking at, you know, four miles going to, to zone six. And when you arrived to the zone three precinct, um, did you meet with Ms. Bennett? I did. Was she with anyone when you met with her? Have a seat. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, you can. <laughs> For a little while. <laughs> well, I need... I watched her when get up, so I'll let you know if I need to. Um, yes, I did meet with Miss Bennett at Zone 3 Precinct. And was she with anyone? She was with a young male child of hers. And when you say young male, how old are you referring? I can't remember how exactly the young man was. It was between, my best memory is between infant and just barely walking or not walking stage. So a baby. Baby or toddler. And what, if anything, happened while you were at the Zone 3 precinct? Um, I spoke with Ms. Bennett, who advised me of the events that occurred both um, earlier that morning, around 4 o'clock a.m., and the previous day, which was Mother's Day, May 12th, 2024, I mean 2013. And what did she tell you while at the precinct? She said that around um, 1 o'clock on Mother's Day, which was May 12, 2013, she was inside of her apartment at 880 Confederate Apartment D when she heard a loud knock on the door. Um, she went to, to see who was knocking at the door, and her statement to me was that it was a person named Thug, and Thug's brother. Did she tell you that at the police precinct or did she tell you that later? Um, I don't I don't remember exactly when that was told to me. If it was before we went to to um to her back to her apartment or, or prior. Did you memorialize your interactions with Miss um, Bennett in your police report? I did. Well, looking at a copy of the police report help refresh your memory as to what she told you at the police precinct. Yes. One second. Commissioner Coach. You may now. I'm going to show you what um, I've shown the defense counsel in State's Exhibit 58 um, Alpha Alpha. Tell me if you recognize 58 Alpha Alpha. So, according to my report Wait, here, what? I'm sorry. Yes, I do. The 58 Alpha Alpha is an incident report I made on May 13th, 2013. And looking at a copy of your police report, would that help refresh your memory as to what was said to you while just at the precinct? It would. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to look at um, 58AA, don't say anything, read it, and once your memory's refreshed, just look up and let me. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Is your, has your memory been refreshed? It has. All right. What occurred? What, if anything, did she tell you while at the precinct? At the precinct, she told me uh, that the night before at approximately, or the day before at approximately 1 o'clock, she was robbed at gunpoint and at her apartment at 880 Cherokee. And she waited... And she the next then one second. Okay. And let me ask you why you're refreshing. You said the apartment at 880 Cherokee. Is that where the apartment is? Eight, where? 980. I mean 980 Confederate Avenue. I'm sorry. Mr. John, I'm going to object to just ask that. Basis. He needs to refresh his recollection, not testify. 
I sustain the objection. Are you looking at a copy of your report of refresher? I am. As to what though? That's what the that's what the improper objection is. So, if you need to get in, yes. Are you looking at the police board of refresher memory as to what she told you while at the precinct? Yes, okay. and and the the top front. So, did looking at the report help refresh your memory as to what she told you at the precinct? It did. All right. Um, go ahead. Has your okay. memory been refreshed? It has. All right. So, so when I when I initially met her at the precinct, Stone City precinct, she advised me that. The day before, on Mother's Day, at about 1 o'clock, she was robbed at gunpoint by um, known individuals to her. Um, she stated that they later came, they later came back. Okay. If um, 911 wasn't actually physically called? Via police radio to dispatch. So either the desk officer or whatever officer respond, either if it's a flag down or a walk into the precinct, would get on the police radio, advise their location and what they had, and that would initiate a CAD report. When she says CAD report, she's saying computer automated dispatch. What that does, that just gives you when people, when you're in an accident or you have an incident and people give you a police report number or an incident number, it's generally nowadays computer automated. Um, in Atlanta, it's the year, like this year of 24 would always be the start. And then a Julian date 
So 001, it would start January 1st is 001. Then the last four would be whatever number you were that day on either calling 911, flagging an officer down, or walking to a precinct, whichever would need it to generate a report. And have you, over the course of your 24 years, been able to view and understand CAM reports? Yes. And are you familiar with how they are kept? Yes. Are CAM reports kept in a regular and ordinary course of business for the Atlanta Police Department? Are they? I'm sorry. Kept talking? in a regular and ordinary course of business for the Atlanta Police Department. They are. And are they generated at the time in which the calls are initiated? They are. Um, permission to approach? I'm going to show you what's the mark that states within 55A and 56A. Right. How many of you recognize states within 55A and 56? Oh, excuse me, 55 Alpha Alpha and 56 Alpha Alpha. All right, we'll start with 55 Alpha Alpha. Yes. If that's okay. Um, this is what you referred to as the CAB report, Computer Aided Dispatch. It's from May 13th, 2013. Um, and, and before you go into full detail, tell me, do you recognize that to be a uh, computer aid dispatch report? It is. All right. And does that appear to be looking at that care report, a fair and accurate depiction of a care report mm -hmm. generated um, on May 13th, 2013? It is. All right. Now also looking at 56 Alpha Alpha. Yes. Does it also appear to be a CAD report that was generated back on May 13, 2013 as relates to this incident? It is. And again, are both 56 and 57 Alpha Alpha kept, 55 and 56 Alpha Alpha kept in the regular and ordinary course of business of the Atlanta Police Department? They are. Yeah, this time I'm saying like tenders 56 Alpha Alpha, 55 Alpha Alpha, 56 Alpha Alpha into evidence. Any objection to states 55? Yes, Your Honor. Objection as to both on the grounds of hearsay. Uh, I'm so go for the state. Also object uh, as to improper foundation. Uh, there's not a proper witness to uh, testify and go up to any foundation as custodian of records. Uh, uh, it comes so for the state with note number three. I believe this is specifically for him. You want May I have a And confrontation for Your Honor. May I have a Yes. Your Honor, he's been an officer with. Um, the Atlanta Police Department for 24 years. He is familiar with the reports in which he is discussing. These reports are kept in the regular and ordinary course of business in which he's familiar with, and that'll be enough to get it as a business record exception under, um, and he... This is my CAD report. <laughs> and it's his CAD report. And so he would be able to introduce... Yeah. That is, um, one of those reports are Mr is Investigator Kirkman's actual CAD report that he generated as a call-in regarding this incident, Your Honor. I'd also object on the grounds of bolstering, improper bolstering. How old was that one? Can I give the court the site to the counsel for Pedro? No, I'm good. How's that?
Fine, Mr. Adams, this is your objection. This is the foundation uh, custodian <coughs> confrontation. They are, over, they are overruled. So, at this point in time, I'll state uh, over your objection. And that's the improper hearsay, Your Honor? 55 out of 60 and 56 out of And that's the hearsay, Your Honor? Overruled, sir. Permission to publish. Thank you, Your Honor. First, 55 out for out. Let me know if I'm walking. First one that states is in the 55 Alpha Alpha. If you can just kind of orient the jury, um, how was this head report to strike that? Let's go back. Earlier you talked about how the number was generated. If you can look at that incident number and walk again through how that, the significance of those numbers, with the year, the um, date. He's already testified to that. I want them to show it. Okay. Um, going through this um, exhibit, if you can let the jury know how is it that again because a call wasn't created, how this was generated. This this was if you go down just a little bit, you can tell you, you can see that it's self-initiated, which means and then now go back up or right here. You can see that's the officer's name and their unique ID number and self-initiated. Self that would mean it's either a walk into the precinct, he got flagged down or something, he ran into something. So this would be something where they pulled, an officer pulled himself out on. Okay. And you just scroll down? This officer who pulled himself out on it was working 3399. Um, 3399, three would be the watch, so that is evening watch. Three would be the zone, zone three, and 99s are usually the officers working as desk officers inside the precinct. And we'll also count when that person was working at the desk inside the precinct. Yes. Based on looking at the CAD report. Yes. Okay. And at what point in time? Does it appear that he initiated this CAD? Um, Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to object. That's all speculation. I, um, I stand corrected. What time was the CAD initiated? According to this, um, SI self initiated 513 2013 at 24458 p.m. And do you know why? Do you know what would be the significance of the remarks of 980 time? Um, 980 Confederate. Um, I don't know if he didn't, I don't know why it wasn't always spelled out here. But that, that would be speculation and I would get a standard mission. Okay, looking at the second line, 3399A, what does the A symbolize? A is arrived. And then if you just keep on going down, okay. so RL. RL is relocating. That's where the address was corrected. And then RL relocating looks like the address was corrected again from court to avenue. And then what, what is C? C is when the officer cleared the call. And looking at 
looking down at the bottom, we're at 246.01, and it's at 5232. Uh -huh. Can you explain that to the jury? Um, I could go back for I can read all of, all of it. Um, we're talking here? Yes, sir. Um, which is given the address, Confederate Court, inside the city of Atlanta. Okay. And now, and I believe that's everything that's contained on that page. Okay. Now, looking um, at um, this page, what if, what if anything is that indicating for um, this portion of the care? All right, so this is still 30, the, the desk officer's CAD report. It's showing when he gave the address, it shows up as 607, which would be in back in that back then zone 6 beat 07 or beat 7. Um, same thing here. Um, this is switching the CAD from a zone 3 CAD to a zone 6 ad, CAD. Because even though he pulled out, it was self-initiated in Zone 3, it's not 80 Confederate, it's actually in Zone 6. So that, that corrected the location in the CAD report. Um, so he's the primary officer again with the, with the address. And go now, anything else within that page? Um, that's a... It's the premise history page. Um, it's not showing anything. Um, so, and then I don't know if there's anything in the narrative below. But looking at that case, there's nothing in the narrative. No, I don't okay. see any, anything in the narrative. All right, now we're going to look at 56 Alpha Alpha. And my but time to time, can I refer back to this just for I get a whole whole view? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now, at fifty six out out, is that a different incident number? It is. And do you know why there was a different incident number from the first one for 50, 55 out out to 56 out out? Because this was the one, this is the CAD report that I self initiated. Okay. And with the fact that you self initiated generated a, a, new, a new number. It would. All right. Uh, walk us through what time did you uh, initiate this uh, report? Um, 15.09, which is 3.09 p.m. Okay. And is that when you would have received information from Zone 3 to make your way to Zone 3? This was self-initiated while I was at Zone 3. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear the response. It was self-initiated while I was at Zone 3. You can kind of walk us through this portion of your CAD report. Okay. Again, SI, that's self initiated. Um, date and time. And what was the time? Um, date and the time. Um, May 13th, 2013. Time 3.09.37 p.m. Okay. Um, again, shows the address. I mean, Confederate Court Apartment D. Um, if you go here, that RL, that's um, relocating, meaning I got on the radio and I advised them that I was changing from Zone 3 Precinct and actually going to the location of 980 Confederate Avenue. And this is when I cleared the call. At what time did you clear the call? At 4.28 p.m. All right. And so it was fair to say that you spent about an hour on this call, an hour and 18 minutes on this call? Yes. All right. And looking at the bottom, under the narrative,
Harrison, what if anything did you tell radio? This is this is radio. Sorry, check. This is um radio traffic. About 13, 2013 at 3.09, 37 p.m. Um, this is me pulling out that I have a female and a juvenile male. This was my vehicle mileage that I started with. Um, this is the time that I started traveling, 15.09 hours. Advising them I'm going from zone three precinct. 16G is police jargon for precinct. Um, that 7334, that is the ID number. So they were advised to meet me at Confederate Avenue. Um, this at 709, I'm sorry, this. So at 1514 hours, so five minutes later, I arrived. My any mileage was um, 8075805, which is one mile from Zone 3 Precinct to uh, 980 Confederate Court Apartment D. And when you go into 7334 ID, who, who are you calling to ask for, to meet you at the location? That, um, It says uh, 7334 would have been the crime scene technician's number. Um, so that's their unit number. And they were advised of the call. And Now, back in 2013, did you have um, body-worn cameras in 2013? No, I did not. Now, we spoke about um, Ms. Bennett, who you met. Do you recall what her date of birth was? Um, not off the top of my hand. I'd have to refer my police report for that. And would looking at a copy of your police report have refresh your memories of her date of birth? It would. I do. And um, how do you recognize 57 Alpha Alpha? This is a copy of the police report written by myself on May 13, 2013. And we're looking at a copy that helped refresh your memory as to the date of birth. Of it Bennett. sure did. Okay. Um, and without reading from the document, um, once your memory's refreshed, you can just look up and let me know what was her date of birth. 6-15-1986. Um, And did you, from that care report, um, what occurred once you made it back to <clears throat> apartment D and not a Confederate um, court? Per the CAD report? No, no. I'm what sorry. happened once you got back to the apartment, got to the apartment? Um, we, um, it was myself, Investigator Jones, Miss Bennett, and her small male child. So we all rode together. Um, we went to her apartment, which was apartment D. Um, we visually looked inside and outside the apartment, um, verified stories and events Ms. Bennett was saying, and also questioned Ms. Bennett about the incident that happened. And let me ask you, why did you go back to the apartment? Because this was a report of um, two serious crimes. Um, one from the day before on the 12th of an armed robbery with firearms taken and shot. And the second was a report of them coming back in that morning, um, firing shots again. Um, so due to the nature of potential evidence, witnesses, um, wanting to verify stories and accounts, um, I went back to where the location was alleged to have happened. And 
while at the apartment, was she able to give you more detail about what happened? She was. All right. And what, if anything, do you recall her telling you as far as what happened first on May 12th, 2013? So, um, Ms. Bennett said she was inside of her apartment. She heard a loud knock at the door. Um, she looked and noticed it was a male named that she knew uh, named Thug, and also a person that she stated name was Thug's brother. Um, she said that these two were friends of her child's father, uh, Mr. Makia Anderson. Uh, once she recognized that she knew the individual, she let them inside of her apartment. Did she say what if anything happened once yeah. she came inside of her apartment? She said she went, she went into the kitchen to give her baby a bottle, or make her baby a bottle, excuse me, at which point um, Thug's brother um, produced what she called a 9 millimeter handgun and put it back to her head, to the back of her head, demanding her... Um, personal items, money, effects, stuff like that. Did she advise anyone else when entered the size club and She said um, another male had entered um, named DK. She said that it was a, um, a non-millimeter, but she had to describe to you what color that non-millimeter was. Um, I have to go back and I don't believe so, but I have to go back and check on the report. Okay. We're looking at a copy of your report. How professional it It would. Okay. Um, silver, not millimeter. And you said that there was this third person, DK. Did she, did she advise that she was aware of or knew who DK was? Did she know DK? Yes. And did she say if they asked or demanded anything from her? Yes, they demanded several items. And did they take anything? They did. What did they take? I have to... Well, um, go ahead. Yes, I know they took... Um, a Versace necklace. And, and if you need a refresher report, just... Yeah, I got... I, if there's, I have to go. Um, I know that they took one of her cell phones... $4,000 cash, some car keys, a Versace necklace, a baby or book bag. Um, I think another $100 off the table or something. I'm going to have to go back and get, get more of the list. Is that okay? Yeah. Sorry. Um, they took her Caltech PLR-16-223 caliber pistol. And this, do you recall her? She told you who and she took the gun? Um... DK. Do you recall she told you there was anything inside of the baby book bag on the table? Oh, I'm gonna have to go back. There's something. You say besides or beside? Was there anything inside of the baby book bag that oh. was taken? Yeah, um, yeah, inside she she said Ray Dre headphones. Ray? Or red? Red, okay. red, sorry, R E D. And did she describe the color of the baby book bag? Yes. She can refer to the Brown. And you said that she um, mentioned that they took car keys. Do you recall what type of car keys they were? Were they hers or the rental or something? She said, I believe she said rental, but I have to make sure I have to go go back. Yes, you can. Oh, where are the car keys? Rental car keys, yes. If, if you need to refresh your memory, is there anything else 
um, that she lists as being taken. What you said thus far is the Versace necklace, a hundred dollars, an additional four thousand dollars, one of her cell phones, rental car keys, her brown baby book bag that has the red Dre headphones inside of it, and her Caltech model um, PLR um, two two three pistol. Was there anything else? So we got the four grand in there. Yes. Yeah, I believe that's all. And was there a dis distinction or a difference between where the hundred dollars was and where the four thousand dollars was? I know the hundred dollars was off the kitchen table. Um, the four thousand dollars, I'll have to go back and refresh if I specifically said that where that was. Um, I don't specifically say it, but I did separate it. I didn't do forty so guess in the looks like maybe they were both on the table but two separate yeah and after she told you what um, I was taking did she say if anything else occurred she did what what did she, she say occurred? she stated that on the way out um, DK fired one shot from her stolen Caltech um, just above her couch into the living room wall Did she advise if they left? Yes. Um, and did she advise how they left? And two vehicles. And did she tell you what, what the two vehicles that they left in? I know one was a blue Dodge Challenger, and I had to I had to look on the color of the other, a brown four-door vehicle. And to your knowledge, do you know if either of those were associated with the rental car keys that she um, said was stolen? I don't know. She made no mention that they were that her car was stolen, just the car keys. And did she advise at all to you um, what occurred once what she did once they left her car? She did. What did she say? She said that um, she was scared, so she stayed inside of her apartment for several hours um, before going to a hotel room for the night. And then, um, did she tell you what, did, did she return to her apartment after leaving to go to the hotel? Not to my knowledge, not until I drove her back to the apartment. Did she advise you of anything else um, that occurred at her apartment? She advised, um, she stated that the reason she came in to the Zone 3 precinct to report this was that earlier in the morning, around 4 o'clock, she received notification from some unknown witnesses, neighbors, that around 4 o'clock, people had returned and shot up her apartment. And is that the reason why she came and reported? She said after conferring with her mom and the fact that they came back and shot her apartment up, that's why she was reporting it the next day. And then was she able to show you anything on her own regarding of the individual that she had, that she told you came to her home the day before and shot and, and stole from her and, she, and yes. shot that one shot for Mother's Day? She told me she had a picture of Thug and DK on her cell phone. And was she able to show you that picture of Thug and DK on her cell phone? She did. Okay. Did she say anything else about the individuals, um, about any of the individuals who stole from her on Mother's Day? Like I said, she said they were all friends of her child's father, um, Mr. Anderson, I believe, Mia Anderson, Mika Anderson. Um, she said that they were using the phone that she stole. That she stole? That they stole, I'm sorry. One of her, the cell phone, the Boost Mobile cell phone, whatever. 
um, that they were using that to contact her, saying they were sorry. And yeah. Did did she ever tell you they advised whether or not they yeah, did? Did she ever tell you they communicated with her? Yes. Okay. What if anything did the individuals who stole the items communicate to her? Um, can I refer to exactly yes. what they said? Said they called her to apologize. And to do anything else? Um, offer to return her stolen items. Was she able to tell you if she knew where these individuals were the night before they robbed her? They said they were out with her child's father, Mr. Anderson. And this is all information that Ms. Bennett provided you back at her home. Is this all the information that she provided to you while back at her home? Yes. Now, early on the care report, you said you had ID tech come out. Why did you have the ID tech come out? Um, to take pictures of Ms. Bennett's apartment, which I noticed um, bullet holes. And have you had an opportunity to look at those pictures um, in preparation for your testimony today? I have. Um, and, Your Honor, this time the state would like to um, publish um, what has already been admitted as State's Exhibit 1 through 23A. Um, AA. Now, while this is um, being put up, let me ask you this. Are you familiar with the apartment layout of the Trestle Tree Apartments? Um, familiar with the layout back in 2013. I don't know if they've been refurbished. Re yes. Yeah, and how are you familiar with the layout of the apartments back in 2013? Um, I was in Zone Six for for several years, and I had a few calls at 980 Confederate where I went inside the apartments. And have you had the ability to go inside and see the layout of the apartments? I'm sorry. Have you had the ability to go inside those apartments and look out, look inside those apartments? I did. Permission to approach your own. I'm going to show you what's been marked as Stacey's Exhibit 24 um, Alpha Alpha. Tell me if you recognize Stacey's Exhibit 24 Alpha Alpha. I do. And how do you recognize Stacey's Exhibit 24 Alpha Alpha? Um, it is very similar to the layout of what would be a, a two bedroom apartment at 980 Confederate back in 2013. And in looking at um, 24 Alpha Alpha, is that familiar to what Miss um, <coughs> Bennett's apartment looked like or resembled back in 2013? Except it's transversed, so this actually would have been the front door okay. and then at the back door. So it's the opposite of what's in 24 out loud. Right. The, um, the, that, up here, let me get it up, I'll show you. Well, okay. Up here, yeah, yeah, that would have been the front door and then the back door. Tell me about that, but mm -hmm. is that a fair accurate picture of the layout of those apartments back in 2013? It is. Now, this time I said like 10 to 24 alpha hours. Hey, Justin, I want to check that uh, <coughs> foundation because it's not picture is transversal opposite. It's not going to go. I'm going to assist the apartment as well. I'm going to assist the apartment as well. I'm going to assist the apartment as well. Well, if I was looking at it, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yep. My question for you. If you were looking at that apartment complex, outside of it being flipped, is that the layout of the two bedroom apartments at Trestle Tree Apartment back in 2013? It is. At this time, they would like to send the 24 Alpha Alpha into evidence. Thank you, Jesse. Or the rules, there's nothing different. Yeah. Even wrong, old school, you're wrong. Well, sure.
I can't. I'm left-handed. I can't draw. <laughs> With this, we'll use this bottom portion to be um, Confederate court and draw it looking as the street is Confederate court. Okay. So, um, if you don't mind, I'll do two pictures. Okay. One just the building and then a bigger one of the actual apartment. So, the building would have been red bit brick building like that. You would have upstairs and downstairs of course four apartments each um a and b um c and d so a and b c and d um this bennett's apartment was d upstairs to the right so that would have been her apartment on that four apartment building so here, Federer Avenue, walkway up to that building. Um, her apartment would have been, like I said, upstairs. There would have been some steps. Um, the door here, D. Um, some windows. Um, from the door, be the living room, wall, and closets. Um, behind this wall, kitchen, and some baths, and a couple bedrooms. Put them over here. Bedroom and bed. All right. Thank you. So, and based upon the recollection, that's a fair and accurate drawing of how you remember her floor laid out back in May of 2013. It is. And if you could just put May 5, 2013 on there and your initials. Now I want to show you what's already been admitted Do I already have copies of those? Go back to 44 and 45. Okay, Four alpha. That is the entrance off of what was then Confederate Avenue 
to Trestle Tree Apartments. And is, it, is that a gated entry? It was. Okay. Back in 2013, it was a gated entry. Uh, you said, I'm sorry, back in 2013? Yeah, back in 2013, it was a gated entry. Right. Um, the gates didn't always work, but they, they were there. And do you recall having, if you can remember, did you have to go into the gate to go to Ms. Um, Bennett's apartment? He would, yes, I did. Okay. Um, all right, now we're going to start looking at state's exhibit um, number one, Alpha Alpha. And while we're waiting for um, that to load, do you recall if Ms. Um, Bennett was able to give you a phone number to the phone that was taken from her? Uh, I believe she did. I'd have to refer back for the number on my report here. Okay, if you go ahead and refresh, look at your report, see if it helps refresh your memory. Yes, it's 404-734-7358. And then also, I believe you said it earlier, but it's I believe she did. I have to go back to the report for the serial number. Okay. Look and see if the, those copies of the report give you the serial number to the Caltech. Yes, it did. And does looking at the copy of the report have refresh your memory as to the serial number for the Caltech? It does. And once your memory's refreshed, let me know. It is P as in Paul, V607. Did you say V as in Victor? V as in Victor. Six. Zero seven. Now, looking at, excuse me, say specific one out the out. Um, did you direct the, excuse me, the crime team take these pictures? I did. Okay. And what was significant for you for the crime team to take this uh, picture of? Uh, what's the picture in one out the outfit? This is the outside of 980 Confederate. Um, like I said here, A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. And up here would be in Miss Bennett's apartment back in 2013, which is D. All right. Looking at two out Is that just indicating the um, apartment number? Yeah, that is a fixed sign on the brick of the apartment. All right. Oh, what was significant for you as the investigator in depicting what's in three alpha alpha? Um, two things here. Um, so Miss, this is um, Miss Bennett's apartment door D, and. On that door right here is what I saw was a bullet hole in the door. Okay. And we're going to get to what you saw in D. Looking at um, door C, did you notice any um, defects within door C? I didn't back in the time. Do you see now looking at any looking yeah, there, at? There's some sort of defect here. Um, I'm not really sure what that is. And got a closer picture and the fact that I don't remember inspecting it back in 2013. I can't testify to what that is. And let me ask back in 2013, did anyone while you were out there speaking with Miss Bennett come from apartment C and report anything to you? They did not. <laughs> I'm not asking what anybody, so I'm asking what. Okay. Did anyone make contact with you from apartment C? They did not. Okay. Once looking at apartment D, excuse me, apartment D, you noticed that you said you noticed it was a, what you believe to be a gunshot hole. How, why did you determine that or believe it to be a gunshot hole? Just a um, few things. Um, my training, knowledge, and experience of what a gunshot hole looks like when it hits a door or a wooden or metal object, in this case a wooden door. Um, the size and the shape indicate to me that that is a bullet hole. Okay. 
Was there anything else um, regarding that hole that you that made you um, believe it to be a gunshot hole? I do on the back side. And when you say um, on the back side, is that on the inside of the door? Yeah, on the inside of the door. Right. Um, the way the wood was displaced. Uh, Can we We've been going about an hour and a half or thereabouts, and you probably need to take a comfort break. We're going to take uh, 15 minutes and then come back, okay? All right, we're in recess.
Can we summon our witness, please? Chief. Hold on. Sir, Mr. Uh, Perkman, can you step back for just a second, please? All right, you got 10 seconds. All right, thank you, sir. Um, it was earlier, it had report computation clause as well as hearsay, and it's A A M U S O K O versus State, Your Honor, it's 362, Georgia Appeal 276, and that is footnote 3. And 2022. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Summon our witness, please. All right, summon our jurors, please, sir. Don't do that. Don't do that, please. All right, thank you, uh, Sergeant Ingram. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Now I want to look or focus or go to six alpha alpha and then seven alpha alpha. So first six, is that a closer picture of the defect that you identify as a bullet hole um, in six alpha alpha? It is. All right. And a seven alpha alpha, is that a close up? It is. All right. Now I want to look at eight alpha alpha. What? If anything was significant, or why did you have the crime team tech take the picture that was an eight alpha alpha? This defect with the with the wood peeled off, and that indication is directly on the other side of the door of where the previous picture's defect was, which I identified as a bullet hole. Okay. And nine alpha alpha, is that a close up of um, that particular defect that you saw um, on the back of that door? It is. All right. <clears throat> now looking at 10 alpha alpha and 11 alpha alpha. What, if anything, um, 
excuse me, why did you have the crime team technician take pictures of 10 and 11 Alpha Alpha? Um, may I go back to here? Um, yes. All right, what we're looking at here is apartment D, Miss Bennett's apartment. Her front door, that's the window right to the right of her front door. This window, this is a picture of that window um, with an obvious defect in the window. And did you determine what type of defect or let me ask you. Based on your knowledge and training, was there any significance about that particular defect? Um, based on my knowledge and training, this defect appeared to be from a bullet and a bullet hole. Okay. And had you seen bullet holes that looked like that previously? Yes. Um, and is that over your 24 years of experience? Correct. All right. Now looking at 12 Alpha Alpha <clears throat> and 13 Alpha Alpha. Um, do you see that window or the other side of that window in 13 Alpha Alpha? Yes, right here is the inside of the window, and right there by the pull cord tag is the defect. Okay. Now looking at 15, and let me ask you this, do you recall back in 2013, it appears that a portion of that shade is open? Do you remember if that was how the crime team tech, you and the crime tech found it? Do you recall? Right, if it was any different than what it is right now with that defect, we would have taken a picture of it first before doing any manipulation. Okay. To the fact that there's no prior picture, this would be the way we found the window shade to be. Okay, all right, so now looking at 14 Alpha Alpha as a close up. And does it appear that most of the Windows are closed, <coughs> except for that portion that's kind of open um, in, in 14 Alpha Alpha. Yes, all the windows closed except for the portion where the defect is. And now looking at 15 Alpha Alpha. And 16 Alpha Alpha. Uh, why did you have a crime scene take a picture of 15 and 16 Alpha Alpha? Because this is a shot of the defect after we manipulated by pulling out the slides. Okay. I mean the shades, the slides, the shade. All right. Now I want to look, kind of want to skip to 21 Alpha Alpha. Excuse me, first 20 Alpha Alpha. No, 20. Where on your diagram is 20 Alpha Alpha? This would be these closets right around here. Okay. And then 21 Alpha Alpha? Same closet, different angle right around here. Okay. And in relation to the window, where was that in relation to the window? They would be on a wall, like right around here to the window, maybe. And in 20 Alpha Alpha and 21 Alpha Alpha, what if anything was significant why you had the crime scene tech um, take pictures of 20 Alpha Alpha and 21 Alpha Alpha? Um, this is what, also for my training knowledge and experience, this um, is what I, Consider a bullet hole, enter the wall, and skip along the door. Okay. You said enter the wall. And how? What made you? Injection foundation. Stand injection. Okay. But based on your not training experience, you said it hit the wall and get trapped. Yes. Objection. Same objection. You just... Same objection. Now, I want to go back to state's exhibit. <clears throat> 17 Alpha Alpha and 18 Alpha Alpha. First in 17 Alpha Alpha, what, um, if anything, were you depicting in 17 Alpha Alpha? 
And then, yeah. So this is um, the living room. Um, this is Miss Bennett's. Well, this was Miss Bennett's living room couch back in 2013. Um, this is a defect she showed me up here. What she said was fired the day of her robbery, which was 5-12 of 2013. Fired from her Caltech pistol from DK into her wall right there. And was she able to distinguish that hole that happened on May 12, 2013 from what um, happened at about 4 o'clock a.m. on May 13, 2013? Yeah, Miss Bennett's statement to me was that during the robbery, the day before on the 12th, only one round was fired inside her house. That was from her stolen pistol fired by TK or excuse me, DK, behind her couch in her to her living room wall, which is depicted by that photograph and that defect. And was she able to say anything about what was depicted in State's Exhibit um, 15 Alpha <laughs> Alpha, um, 14 through 16 Alpha Alpha? Um, these were... I don't remember if she told me that these were specifically when they came back and fired, only that the one on the couch was the one, the only one fired when the robbery occurred. Do you recall sitting here now and she remembered having that hole in her um, window when she left her apartment to go to the hotel? Uh, I don't remember if she specifically told me that um, those are the ones that happened the morning before, um, only that she specifically pointed out the one above the couch. Okay. And... Um, looking at 23 Alpha Alpha. What was significant about 23 Alpha Alpha? Um, like we talked about earlier, Mitch, this is, um, Ms. Bennett told me she had a picture of DK and Thug on her phone. Um, she showed it to me. <coughs> This is her holding it, holding her phone. And this picture, if I remember correctly, she was holding it and our crime scene technician snapped a copy of the photo of the two people she said were involved in the robbery on 512. And sitting here today, do you remember which person was Thug and which person was DK? I don't remember which one she told me was who. Um, Now, while you were at her apartment complex, let's first talk about inside the apartment. Did you find any projectiles? Yes, you have a seat. <coughs> All right. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. When you were inside of her apartment, did you find any projectiles? I did not. Did you find any shell casings? I did not. Was that surprising for you? Um, no, not in particular. Why not? Um, one for, for inside, um, only one round was fired, she said, from inside the apartment. Um, that was from the day prior. Um, so, um, anything could have happened to the shell casing. It could have got kicked around. It could have got picked up. Um, I don't know, but it's not uncommon that, I. In my 24 years, I went to shooting scenes and not found projectiles or casings. And as far as outside, did you um, look for or find any shell cases um, or projectiles outside of the apartment? Um, I did look for shell cases and projectiles. Um, I did not find any. And again, um, 
based on your knowledge choices, was that uncommon or surprising for you? Not surprising or uncommon. Why is that? Just one where we were, again, we were dealing with seven hours, several hours of time frame between the reported time and when I arrived to the crime scene. So, um, like I said, they could have been picked up, moved, blown away by landscapers who, you know, I, I, any numerous things could have happened. Okay. Were you able to canvas the area? I did. Okay. And without telling me anything that anyone said, were you able to speak with witnesses on the scene? I did. Were they able to give you information that assisted in your I sustain the objection. I'm not asking any here. I don't sustain the objection. Were you provided information that was assisted you in your investigation? Objection. I sustain the objection. Who did you speak with? I spoke with a. It's not what he who he spoke with is not here. Someone said their name. You're saying something that's here. Your Honor, we don't gonna, believe anyone gave their name. I'm gonna sustain the objection, and you can't testify either. So I'm gonna sustain the objection. Let's move on. I've already ruled on this, anyways. After you canvassed the area, you spoke with witnesses. Did that conclude your investigation on that day? It did. Okay. Let me ask you this. When you were out there, um, the crime scene tech, would they, did they come in a crime scene van? They did. Okay. And would that crime scene van have been parked outside? It would have. Okay. Um, while you were out there, did any residents approach you to give any reports about any shootings? They did. Okay, excuse me. About the entire building being shot up, the entire complex. I stand the objection. Were there any 911 calls outside of the CAD report that you discussed earlier? Not to my knowledge. After May 13th, did you attempt to make contact with Ms. Bennett again? I did. When did you try and make contact with her? It was a couple days after. Um, it was either May, I think it was May 16th, or can I, can I look at So let me know if that report tells if you need another report. No, I need a copy of my case notes. Permission to approach? You may. I'm sure it was the mark of State's Exhibit 59 Alpha Alpha. Does looking at State's Exhibit 59 Alpha Alpha help um, refresh your memory as to when you made, made contact with Ms. Bennett again? Yeah, I called on May 19th around 10.20 a.m. and left her a message. Okay. And did she ever return your phone call? She did not. Um, did you try to make contact make contact with her again? I did not. On May 12th or May 13th, did you get any other reports of any shooting at Trust and Shooting Conference? I did not. Now, were you ever able to identify uh, any of the individuals, Thug, DK, or Thug's brother? 
um, I was. Um, Were you able to identify? I was able to identify Thug as Jeffrey Williams. Now, after um, being able to identify Thug as Jeffrey Williams, <clears throat> did you eventually close this case? I did. Why did you close the case? Because um, failure to contact Ms. Bennett to do a follow-up investigation. Okay. Now, in the report, in your report, did you make any determinations about Ms. Bennett um, as the reason why you closed the report? Um, I said in my report that um, it seems that she was being not completely truthful and that then she cannot be located for a follow-up investigation. Now, do you did you put why you believed her to be not completely truthful? I did not. Okay. Today, do you recall as to why you may have put that she was not completely truthful? I do not. I know you said you didn't call her. By any chance, did you ever go back out to the apartment complex to see if she was still residing at the apartment location? I did not. Any reason why you did not go back out to the apartment complex? Um, just caseload, um, busy. Um, did you ever try to make contact with the leasing agent to see if she still resided at the apartment complex? I did not. Um, were you ever able to determine um, if she had gotten a new cell phone or a new cell phone number? I did not. And were you ever able to um, call the telephone number um, in which she said that the suspects were calling from? I don't recall doing that, no. And I know you just talked about caseload. Was that the reason why you didn't do some of the other things? Um, at the at the time, I would have given Ms. Bennett my, my contact information, my number, my email address, along with her report number. Um, it would have been very easy for her to have contacted me also called and left her a message. Um, the follow-up investigation on this would be after the second victim contact where I would have brought her in. We did a formal interview recorded. Um, so this, when she did not contact me or return my calls, my call, excuse me, um, to quite honest and to be candid, this was put on the back burner and I had to move on and, and investigate other crimes. Based upon what she told you about at least what happened on May 12th, was that bullet hole in her couch consistent with what she had told you about what happened to her on May 12th? Yes, it was. Court's indulgence for a moment. Just investigate Kirkman in your um, years of experience. Uh, what is it uncommon for victims of crimes to not respond after reporting a crime? Objection, I stand the objection. Um, 
Did the fact that Ms. Um, Kirkman told you that they called and apologized to her, did that have any bearing on your investigation? That Ms. Bennett called and said they apologized? No, that the individuals who stole her phone called her and apologized. Did that have any bearing on your investigation? No. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, given that it's 12.15 in the lunchtime hour, um, why don't we take an hour for lunch and have everybody come back for 1.15, okay? Um, and that's Gary Kirkman. If we can get you to come back for 1.15, we'll continue examination at that time. Please don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys in this case, okay? Yes, sir. All right, thank you, sir. I'm going to release you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you back at 1.15, okay? All right, I'll rise. Ladies and gentlemen, um, jury has left us. We'll see you at one fifteen.
Correct. Um, one of the last things that you said to this jury was that the case was closed because you found Ms. Bennett to be, in your words, not truthful, correct? That is what I wrote. That is correct. Okay. Well, and that's what you meant, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you are, um, you have been an officer with APD for 24 years, if I heard you correctly. Correct. You have conducted numerous investigations. That is correct. You have had occasion to speak to hundreds and hundreds of witnesses, I presume. Yes, if not thousands. Thousands. Right? <laughs> if not, maybe. Well, we'll hundreds. From well, you, you've investigated hundreds of cases. That would yes. be fair to say. Yes. Um, you have dealt with all sorts of folks and all sorts of allegations. Yeah, right. Yeah. Correct. All right. Um, this case, at least, and you've been referring to it as uh, the crime, but in reality, what it was was an allegation made by Archillian Bennett. True. It was a reported crime by Ms. Bennett. Right. Um, backed up by some, what I presume to be gunshot holes and other things and some witnesses statements. Okay, so we're gonna talk about, about what you saw and what you observed. Um, but it is true that in any investigation, you rely upon physical evidence, true? That's correct. But you also rely upon what is told to you by a witness, correct? Correct. You would rely upon what is told to you by someone who calls themselves a victim, true? Absolutely. In this case, Archillian Bennett called herself a victim, correct? She did. All right. Now, it is important to test the statements uh, made by any witness, right? Correct. Uh, because the reality is you don't, what you do is, an, is important. You, you're, you're doing an important job investigating crimes, correct? Yes. An allegation of a mar armed robbery is serious. It's a serious crime. Yes, uh, in my opinion it is, yes. An allegation of a shooting or an aggravated assault is a serious crime. Absolutely. And what you do not want to do as an investigator is you don't want to charge someone with a crime if the person making the allegation has not been truthful, correct? I don't want to charge a person with a crime if the evidence is, is not there. Right. Um, that's, that's always been my biggest fear is to charge somebody who didn't do something. So I, I try to carefully weigh what I have, what's known to me, and make a judgment call based on probable cause. Right. And, and, and of course, one of the items of evidence that you rely upon in making that very important decision is um, what you consider to be the trustworthiness of a witness or a victim. True? It is, but that, got it. This was the initial call out. Um, that's only the beginning of what a complete investigation would be on my part. Understood. So getting to the teeth of stuff and the trustworthiness and the actual proving one way or another in my mind would be done later on in the investigation. If I could, if Ms. Bennett and I would have connected again and had a formal interview recorded docking at a police station or somewhere. That never happened. That did not happen. You don't know why Ms. Bennett didn't follow up with you. You don't know. I do not know. You don't know whether or not, I mean, because you're human, right? You're an investigator, but you're human. You don't know what Ms. Bennett's motivation for saying the things she said were. No. Um, Other than what she told me that it had, that she was scared. Right. And that's what she said, right? Yes. Um, you don't know whether that's true or not. You just know that's what she said. Right? That's what she said on the 13th of May, 2013. Um, one of the things um, that I heard a man of prosecutor ask you towards the end is whether or not, for example, the um, defect that you saw above the couch Right. was consistent with what Miss Bennett told you. Remember that question? I do. You said it was, right? I did. Now, so seeing a defect above a couch would be consistent, in your opinion, with her saying that someone had shot at that wall the day before, right? Yes. Okay. Now, 
it would also, if she had said, for example, someone shot at this wall two months ago above the couch and you saw the defect, that would be consistent with that too, right? Same, yeah. Right. And so, really, she could have told you anything, maybe not anything, <laughs> she could have given you any number of explanations as to why that defect was in the wall, and the only thing you would have to go on is, well, that is what she said caused it. True? Objection, speculation. I stand the objection. The objective of any investigation is to try and figure out what happened. Sure. I have a little bit different, but it's the same. My my objective is to try to find the truth. Okay. And be absolutely certain that I've come to that truth and, based and on the evidence and testimony. Yes. Because and that is because of how important it is to to get something like this right. Right. Yeah, you're dealing with people's freedom, their livelihood. You know, you don't want to get it wrong. Right. And so arriving at the truth um, would be to some extent tied to the truthfulness of a witness. Correct? Right? Yes. Okay. In this case, sounds like a silly question, but you weren't there on May the 12th of 2013 in 980 Confederate Avenue. You weren't there, right? Oh, it's not. Right. Um, any account of what happened on May the 12th of 2013 came from Ms. Bennett, correct? And a couple of witnesses that did not provide me with their names. Okay. So let me ask you this. On the 13th, May the 13th, the day after this incident supposedly happened, um, you go to your zone, which was at that time zone... Zone 6. Zone 6. Ms. Bennett has gone to zone six, right? No, she went to zone three. Zone three. When did you meet her? At zone three. Okay, so you go to zone three, and you meet with Ms. Bennett. I do. I did, excuse me. She told you that the day before, individuals had come to her apartment, right? Yes. And, and I want to go through it piece by piece, but she gave you an account of what she said happened on the 12th, right? Yes. All right. Now, you go back to 980 Confederate Avenue with her. I did. I did. It's you. It's Ms. Bennett. It is the child that is with her. And it is a um, crime scene person. And there was another investigator with me. And who was that? Carrie Jones. Okay. All right. So you all go back to 980. And at this point, you're looking to investigate, get, get more information about what she has already told you. Correct. All right. Now, now, Prosecutor, would you um, assist me in putting up uh, what you have, what you all have entered as uh, uh, 1AA? All right, investigator, you're going to see, uh, like you've seen earlier, the, the picture pop up both behind you and to, and to your left. Um, for right now, you can look at the one on your left. All right. All right. So you'll, you go to the location. What you have at this point is a description of what had happened by Ms. Bennett, correct? Yes. All right. Now, you go up the stairs, and as you indicated earlier, there are two doors, two apartments at the top of that staircase. There's an apartment C and apartment D, correct? Right? That's correct. Can I have, uh, 2AA, please? Mm -hmm. 3AA. All right. So there we are. So we have C and we have D. That's, that's what's shown. You can see that in the picture, right? I can. If I heard you correctly, um, you testified earlier about this defect that is in the door of apartment D, right? Correct. All right. Now, I'm going to have you keep your seat with the course permission. Right, course permission. Yes, sir. All right. Um, but I do need you to turn around for me, uh, if you don't mind. I investigated. Okay. You agree that when you got there on that day, we're talking 10 years ago, um, a little more than 10 years Almost ago. Almost 11. Yes. Almost 11. You noticed this, a defect in the door of apartment D, right? I did. Now, you did not 
10, almost 11 years ago, noticed the defect in apartment C, correct? I don't recall. Okay. Um, I made no note of it in my official report and like the time frame, so I don't know if I noticed it and dismissed it okay. or if I didn't notice it. Um, I don't know which one is the case there. Okay. But truth, truth, truth be told, I mean, at that time, I think you said you started APD 2001? 2001. Okay. So you, you have about 12 years in at that point. And as a seasoned investigator, if you'd seen a, if you'd noticed a defect in apartment C, uh, after hearing an allegation about shots being fired at this apartment building, you probably would have made note of it in your report, wouldn't you? Uh, most certainly. I'm assuming that's not in evidence. I will rule the objection. I will rule the objection. Um, I should have, and I should have had crime scene take a close up of it if I believed it was a gunshot defect. Um, I should have knocked on the door of C mm -hmm. to make sure nobody was in there hurt or injured. Okay. Um, I don't recall doing any of that. So. Okay. Um, and and no, no knock on you. I'm, I'm just, uh, I re really just asking you about the things that you actually saw on that day. Right. right? And I'm doing the best. It's okay. Been, it's been a while. True. Um, can I have um, States Exhibit <coughs> 4AA, please? And then if we, and that's the same defect on door number D, Just right? a little closer. Door letter D, not number D. And let's do um, 5AA, please. And, okay, let's do six then. All right, let's do seven. <coughs> there we go. There we go. All right, now I want to ask you a question about this. Earlier when you testified, um, you identified this as what you saw on that day, right? Correct. This defect. Now, I wrote down, investigator, that you described it as a bullet hole. Is that correct? Bullet hole. Okay. Would you agree? Bullet with... defect. Bullet defect. Okay. Well, it was a defect, right? Right. Your opinion was that it appeared to be a, have been caused by a bullet. It was. Right. Now, would you agree with me that this is not a bullet hole? In other words, there's nothing going through the door. I do agree. I, it does not seemed like it made it all the way through, that it made contact with the door and didn't penetrate all the way through. Okay, now, as you're here on, as you were there on that day, May 13, 2013, and as you see that defect, without knowing anything else, you don't know of your own personal knowledge when or how that defect got there. When or how? Yes. Um, of your own personal knowledge. The when was provided to me by Ms. Bennett. <coughs> the how was later substantiated when I looked on the inside of the door and it made more apparent that that appeared to be a gunshot defect. Right. So, so let me, I want to make sure you understand the question I'm asking though, right? Okay. Um, of your own personal knowledge, right? Because at this point, you weren't there on the 12th, right? No. Okay. So you show up to this location. You're looking at the door. Imagine you hadn't heard anything from Miss Bennett. Hadn't heard anything from anybody else. As you walk up to this door and you see this defect, you don't know how or when that got there. Objection, speculation. A standard objection. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's go to 8AA. <clears throat> That's the inside of the door, right? It is. All right. Uh, let's go to 9AA, please. Should be a little bit closer. Okay. That's a close-up of the inside of the, of the door, am I correct? That is correct. All right. Now, you described what we're looking at here as a defect, right? That is correct. Would you agree with me that this does not appear to be a hole? In other words, it doesn't go through the door. No, it did not go through the door. Okay. Now, as you look closely, can you zoom in on that, please, um, Madam Prosecutor? And if you can't, that's fine. There we go. Now, do we see anything on the inside of this defect right there? There is some kind of protrusion. Okay. Um, exactly what it is, I can't tell from that picture. Does it appear to be patched? A hole that's been patched? I'm not sure. Okay. And, and just to be clear, 
right? When you spoke to Ms. Bennett, either at the station or at the apartment, she did not mention anything to you about patching any holes or fixing any defects, right? No. Okay. In fact, I'm going to jump forward a little bit because we talked about um, shell casings. Now, when you talked to Ms. Bennett, she didn't mention anything to you about picking up or moving any shell casings, right? She did not. She did not mention anything to you about cleaning up or sweeping up any glass or uh, any mess that, had, that she said had been caused by the shooting at the apartment, right? She did not. Okay. And you did not find any shell casings inside of that apartment? I did not. You did not find any shell casings outside of the apartment? I did not. Okay. Um, it wasn't just you. It was... Crime Scene Tech, uh, Porter, I think the name's Porter now, uh, and Investigator Jones, Jones uh, all of whom were there, nobody found any evidence of shell casings outside of the apartment that had supposedly been shot at on the morning of May 13th. True? To my remembrance, no. Nor, and I should have, and if that would have been the case, I would have notated that in my report. Sure. I mean, t 12 years in at that point, you have a report about a shooting, you're outside, you see some shell casings, you're going to pick up, you're going to have a crime scene pick them up. Absolutely. Okay. Um, all right. So let's, let's move forward a little bit because I want to ask you about, let's see, um, what number are we at? Let's do 988, please. Sure. Let's do 10. Outside of the apartment, this is the window right to the right side of the door, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, what you know, let's do 11, please. What you know back on um, May 13th, as you're there at the location, is that this appears to be a defect in the window, correct? That is correct. Your opinion is that it is. it looks like a bullet hole. That is my opinion, that it is a bullet hole. Okay. Now, um, it appears... It appeared to you, and please correct me if, if, if I'm wrong. I don't want to misstate you, right? And I don't want okay. these to be your words. Um, it appears that as whatever it is went through that window, it made a hole, right? Yes. So the glass that would have been here is gone, true? It is gone. Okay. Can we go to um, 13AA, please? Okay. This is looking at the same window from inside the apartment, correct? It is. All right. Let's go to uh, 14 AA and 15 AA. All right, so that's a close up, right? It is. Now, you're not, you're the investigator, you're not the crime scene person, but you have a crime scene person there who's working at your direction. Correct. Right? Um, you would be the person telling the crime scene technician, you know, I want you to pay attention to this or photograph this or things to that effect, right? Generally, yeah. Okay. Now, would you agree with me? That did not, there did not appear to be any shards of glass or or uh, any sort of glass underneath this bullet hole on this counter. Is that true? That is correct. Okay. Now, when a gun is fired, um, let me let me get you turned around. Yep. I'll head back over this way. When a gun is fired. There you go. Let me grab that because I've got to use it again. Okay. When a gun is fired and the bullet comes out, generally speaking, the bullet's going to go somewhere, right? Yeah, what's well, going somewhere? Correct. Right. Yeah. And and in an enclosed space like an an apartment, uh, for example, if a bullet, let's say hypothetically, comes through a window, it's going to go somewhere in that apartment. Is that fair to assume? Yes. All right. Now, in this case, if we can move to exhibits, let's see, seventeen A, perhaps. All right, 17A, right, if you can see right there to your left, that is a picture of the defect that we talked about previously above the couch, right? Yes. All right, uh, 18AA. All right, that's a little closer view of that same defect, isn't that right? Yes. All right, now, in your testimony earlier, you said that your opinion was that 
uh, that appeared to be a, a bullet hole. I think that's what you said. Was I right about that? It was my opinion it was a bullet hole, and also Ms. Bennett stated it was a bullet hole. Right. Okay, so now looking at that, did you, either you or the crime scene technician, have occasion to, to look at it closely to see if there was a, an actual bullet or projectile embedded in that defect above the couch? Uh, I don't remember. Right. If, if there was a, a bullet or a bullet fragment in that hole, right, it would have been evidence, true? If, if either I or the crime scene technician would have physically saw a bullet mm -hmm. from our perspective, um, yes, that would have been removed from the wall and collected as evidence. But there was no bullet or bullet fragment in that defect? Not to my recollection. Okay. And, um, again, we've talked about shell casing because Ms. Bennett's statement, let's call it that, um, was that that defect above the couch came from DK supposedly shooting the gun into the wall, correct? Yes. Okay. And she said that it was her gun. It was a Caltech, something or the other, uh, semi-automatic gun that she says shot into the wall, right? Correct. All right. So notwithstanding her statement, we don't have any shell casing to corroborate that, correct? Correct. We don't have any bullet or bullet defect that was supposedly shot into the wall to corroborate that, right? We have the defect. We don't have a fragment of a bullet or a shell casing. Is that what, you're, that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, we don't have the actual bullet. Right, so, so if there was a bullet that had been shot into the wall the day before and she hadn't cleaned anything up or removed anything, where is the bullet? Um, hard to speculate. Um, the round was the 223 round, which is a rifle caliber round, okay. which is a very high velocity round. Okay. Um, shot into that wall, it could have went anywhere. Well, it would have gone into the wall, right? Into the wall, it may have hit a stud and stopped, it may have went all the way out. Um, I'm not really sure what happened to it. Right. But that defect, that defect isn't a hole where you can see something that could be an indentation of some sort in the wall, correct? I can't tell from this, from this okay. angle. The crime scene was there, right? They were. Okay. Now. I can't remember, did we take another angle of this photo? Okay, well, let's see. Let's like see more what, straight uh, on angle? Let's see what 19AA looks like. There we go. All right, so take a look at that. That, that appears. Can we, can we zoom in any more on that? All right. 19AA, can you see that? I do. Okay. You agree with me that um, that doesn't appear to be, for lack of a better word, a hole? There's actually something that seems to be either plugging it or, or something, that wall? It could be, and I also have an opinion on what else it could be. What else could it be? If you go back to the previous picture. Uh huh. Uh, let's see. 18. Uh, one more. One that shows the closet. Let's go with 17. Hold on, I need this one right here. Which one? This one right here. Give me a number. 17. Yeah. yeah. 17 alpha alpha? Yes. 17 alpha 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 alpha? No, no, one back, right where we were. Just my opinion of doing hundreds of shootings uh -huh. on a crime scene, if the bullet was fired along this trajectory uh -huh. and hit that wall, uh -huh. it could have skipped over and that's what caused this over there. Okay, so that's one theory of what could have happened. One right? theory. All right, which, which kind of comports with what you said earlier about a bullet has to go somewhere, right? Has to go somewhere. All right, so let's use your theory for a second. If we've got a bullet that comes in, hits that wall, 
and goes to the closet door and actually well that question right there but I want to show you something. Yes sir. Let's go to um let's go forward one at a prosecutor. Eighteen AA. You see what we're looking at in eighteen AA, right? Yes. Just a close up of where we where we just were. Let me borrow that money from you. Thank you. All right. Defect in the wall, right? Correct. Defect in the wall. Correct. Defect in the door of the closet. Correct. Defect, hard to see here, but defect on the side of this door in the closet, right? Yep. All right, and defect over here, right? Correct. All right. So is it your testimony then that one possible theory is that a bullet came through the window, hit the wall, hit this wall, hit this door, hit this door, came around the corner and hit that door? Would have been the window or from inside? Just somebody standing on the side of the couch. Okay. But either no bullet or bullet fragment found behind the wall above the couch, right? No. Behind the wall near the door, right? No. Behind the door that's partially cracked, right? No. Or behind the other door all the way over to the left, correct? No. No fragments found at all. Okay. I want to ask you specifically about Ms. Bennett's account of what happened, okay? Correct. Now, first of all, she says that this incident happened on Mother's Day, um, May the 12th, 2013, correct? Part of it. Okay. And then the next, the morning of the 13th. Okay. Um, there was no 911 call that came in on May 12th, 2013 regarding the incident that she says occurred, right? Not that I found. There was no 911 call that came in <clears throat> on the morning of May 13th, 2013. True? Not to my recollection. Okay. And according to her, uh, there is this, talking about the 12th now, there's this shooting or shot being fired in her apartment somewhere around 1 o'clock in the afternoon of Mother's Day, May 12th, 2013. That was her account that the single shot was on Mother's Day on the 12th. Were you familiar with that, um, either that apartment complex or that specific apartment, 980 Confederate Avenue? I can't comment on the specific apartment, okay. um, but I was am, was am familiar with the apartment complex. Okay. It's a big complex. It is. A lot of people live there. They did. I don't know what it looks like now, right. quite honestly. Certainly yeah. back in 2013. Right. It was a big multi-unit apartment complex. Okay. Miss Bennett says that she heard a knock on the door. Is that right? Correct. I think her words were a loud knock. Loud knock on the door. And she said that when she opens it up, someone that she knew as Thug, Thug's brother, and a third person were there, right? Well, she said before she opened it, she looked outside and noticed it was Thug and Thug's brother. Okay. This is what she's telling you, right? What she's telling me. All right. Um, she, at that initial letting in or interact or knowing who was outside, she did not make any mention of a third person. Okay. She says that at some point they're in the apartment with her, right? Right. Okay. She's about to go make a bottle for her baby. That's what she said. Go into the kitchen to make her baby a bottle. Correct. Right. Does she say why they were there? No. Okay. So, according to her, they're in the apartment, and she's as comfortable enough to kind of turn around and go get a bottle for the baby, according to her, right? So she told me, yes. Okay. Now, you would come to find out that um, her, the father of her child, Micah Anderson, um, also lived there with her. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. Okay. Did she tell you that? She did not. You did come to find out that she had, that the father of her child was someone named Micah Anderson. You did find that out, though, right? She did tell me her child's father's name was Micah Anderson. Okay. Correct. She says that as she turns around and goes to get her baby a bottle, um, 
someone, I think she said, Thug's brother, put a gun to her head. Is that what she said? That's what she said. Silver 9mm gun to her head. And she said that they took, number one, her cell phone, right? One of her cell phones. Okay. She said she had more than one? Well, she had one other one when I got there. Because okay. that's the, the picture we took. Okay. So just to be clear, though, she didn't say they took one of my cell phones when she initially told you that. She said they took my cell phone, right? Let me let me refer and Please. make sure she just said singular my, not one of my cell phones. Yeah, yeah, it's important. So if you need to refresh your recollection, just go ahead and take a look at that. It's your report. Um, my report said, um, she took a picture from her cell phone mm -hmm. and that they took one of her cell phones. Okay. When she originally told you or made the report, her Correct. statement to you was that she took, they took one of her cell phones or they took her cell phone? One more cell We're at the... Um, I just put victim's cell phone, okay. so it wasn't specifically one of hers or the only. Okay. They took her cell phone. They took $4,000 in cash that she said she had there in the apartment, right? Correct. And then they took a separate $100 that she also had there in the apartment. Right? Yes. You say where that $4,000 came from? No. Okay. When you, when you got to the location... Um, I want to jump back a little bit. Did she have a car that was there? I don't recall. Do you remember her uh, either referencing or, or saying that she drove a, a Porsche? Do you remember that? Nothing about a Porsche. Okay. All right. So they also took, according to her, her kel pistol, right? Correct. A Versace necklace, right? Correct. Um, a baby book bag, correct? Correct. Some... Uh, red headphones, correct? Red Dre headphones, yes. Beats by Dre headphones? I don't know. I just put Dre. Dre headphones. Okay. Good enough. And some rental car keys. Is that right? That's correct. All right. Now, she said that they took these items and they left, right? Left in two vehicles, correct? Two vehicles. She said that she was scared um, so she stayed there a couple of hours, right? I think her words were several hours. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then she went to a hotel room that night. Correct. Now, as you're investigating this case and you're listening to her story, right? Um, did she ever, let's say, provide any proof that she had, in fact, gone to a hotel that night? Again... That kind of teeth and dig it in would be part of my follow-up investigation. I'd be in a, somewhere in a recorded quiet space, like our precinct, where all this would be broken down step by step by step. Um, this particular case, this was just an initial call out, a basic fact finding, evidence collecting um, on my part. But to answer your question, that question was not asked that I believe, nor was it answered on where she would have got that kind of money. Well, how about this? Because when, when you spoke to her on the 13th, she had supposedly already been through what happened on the 12th and had already gone to the hotel the night before, right? Correct. Did she say, um, I stayed in this place several hours and I went to the Holiday Inn or the... Fairfield Inn or anything like that? Did she volunteer any of that information? I don't remember. And my report just says a hotel room. Okay. Um, but, but certainly at this point, what you're getting from her is that one of these three individuals, I guess she said DK, had fired a gun inside of her apartment where it was her and her infant child. All right? Correct. All right. Very serious offense. Very serious allegation. True? True. All right. Now, one of the things that she told you was that Micah Anderson, her baby's father, 
were friends with these individuals, right? She did. She said that they had actually been out, they being these individuals, and Micah Anderson had actually been out together the night before. Is that right? Correct. Now, when we say the night before, are we talking about the night of the 12th or the night before? I mean, the night of the 11th. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I think we're talking about the night before being Friday night, I mean, Saturday night going into, because the, the incident occurred first on the 12th, so we're probably talking about the 11th, the night before. All right. Did you ever talk to, because now we're on the 13th, did you ever talk to Michael Anderson? I did not. Okay. Um, did it strike you as odd, as an investigator, right, with, with a number of years of experience, that um, she would tell you that three individuals who were close or good friends with her baby's father, Mike Anderson, had come and robbed her and shot up the place near her baby, near Mike Anderson's baby, on the 12th. Did that strike you as kind of, seem kind of strange? Strange? <clears throat> Not strange. Okay. Um, it seemed like stuff that needed to be followed up on with follow-up interviews. Okay. Um, speaking with her, speaking with Anderson, you know, really getting into it. But I don't know if I'd say odd or strange. Well, we certainly know that, you certainly know, that on the 13th, when she came to uh, the police department to report something that had happened on the 12th, she didn't come with Micah Anderson, right? No, and like I said, and it wasn't divulged what her relationship with is Michael Anderson. I didn't know if Michael Anderson stayed there, if they were in communication, if he had any enrollment, I mean, any involvement with the child. At that, that particular point, uh, Tom, I, I had none of that information. Okay. One of the things that she told you as, as you talked to her was that um, these individuals supposedly had her phone, right? Correct. And that they were, did she say that they were calling her from her phone or that they were answering her phone? I think they, she was an, they were answering from her phone. Okay. Now, um, was there ever a point where you were able to corroborate that with any sort of phone records, phone logs, anything like that to corroborate that these calls that she talked about? were taking place. No, I did not. Right. And in fact, one of the things that she said was that they called her to apologize for robbing her. Correct. <laughs> okay. And um, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. they want to cut you they, off. They called her to apologize, but I didn't know whether they were using her stolen phone to do that or another phone. <laughs> did, did you, while you were there, at the apartment, we're talking on the 13th now. Did you ever attempt to call that phone that she said they were answering? I did not. Did she ever attempt or offer, say, hey, you know, they've, they've been answering my phone. Hey, I can call it right now and you'll see they'll pick up. Did she ever offer to do that? I don't remember. Did she ever give you the phone number for that phone? She did. Okay. Did you ever do anything with it? Did you ever do any investigation surrounding that phone or? I where? did not. She showed you um, a picture on the phone and that's Let's see, let's go to uh, State's Exhibit, I think that's number 23. State's Exhibit number 23 is, um, is a picture of Miss Bennett actually holding the phone, holding a phone, correct? Correct. And she is showing you a picture on the phone, is that right? That is correct. All right. Now, did she ever tell you what the circumstances were surrounding this picture that she had in her phone? No. Did she ever indicate whether there were any text messages sent from her phone or to her phone? I don't remember anything about text messages. Okay. Let's go to, um, let's go back to Faith's exhibit. 20 AA, please. 20. And while 
while we're getting there. Let me ask you. Now, this phone call that she, she says she received from them, from the individual that she said robbed her, uh, apologizing for the robbery, did she ever say whether they brought the stuff that she said was stolen back? No, only that they offered to bring her stuff back. And so this is on the third of May. Um, you try to contact her to follow up on what you yourself have described as a very serious incident, alleged incident, right? Correct. You don't get a call back from her. I did not. You get no response whatsoever from this person who claimed that she had just been robbed and a house shot up uh, just a couple days before. Correct. Okay. You... There's no other investigation done to corroborate anything that she has said. Is, is that fair to say? That is correct. Now, I noticed when, when you were asked earlier about um, your closing the case, um, you cited the fact that there was no communication with her. In other words, she wouldn't call you back. She didn't call you back, right? Correct. Um, now, when you said, though, that... that you didn't think that she had been completely truthful with you. That wasn't in regards to whether she called you back or not, right? I don't. Unfortunately, I didn't elaborate on any of that, and I don't remember why um, that was the response I wrote to, to close the case out. But that was certainly your, um, your evaluation, your conclusion at that time back in 2013. It was. That... You knew she wasn't calling you back, and your opinion was that she had not been completely truthful with you. That was my opinion in 2013, correct. All right, so I want to just kind of run back through very briefly a couple of things, and you tell me if I'm correct about these things. Number one. Ms. Bennett made a report about an incident that occurred on um, on the 12th, but there's no 911 call to back that up. True? Correct. Ms. Bennett uh, made an allegation about something happened on the morning of May the 13th, but there's no 911 call to back that up. Correct? Correct. Ms. Bennett made um, a report about a shot being fired inside of her apartment. There's no shell casing or projectile to back that up. Correct? Correct. Ms. Bennett made a report about um, shots being fired at her house from outside, but there's no projectile or shell casings outside to back that up. True? Correct. Um, Ms. Bennett made reference to $4,000 in cash being stolen from her apartment, but there's, no, there's nothing to back that up other than her word. True? Correct. Ms. Bennett made reference to um, keys to a rental car being taken uh, but there's no, you didn't receive a rental car receipt or anything like that to back up. Did she even have a rental car? True? I, I don't know if she had a rental car or not. Um, my investigators did not, she made no utterance to me that she had a rental car there. And so um, not not really sure where the car was or if there was one. Okay. Ms. Bennett uh, made reference to the fact that these individuals who she claimed came to her apartment and shot at her at her wall and stole items from her, had been hanging out with her baby's father the night before, but she never bothered to uh, bring the baby's father or give you his information to, to help substantiate any of that, did she? She gave me his name mm -hmm. and his birthday. Okay. Um, but he was not there during the time the report was taken, no. Okay. The truth is, um, you don't really have any personal knowledge of what really happened in that apartment on that day, do you? No. And it's fair to say that because you found her to be untruthful and 
She was not responsive. I stand in objection. Because of um, your determination about her and the fact that she was not responding to you after making these allegations, you closed the case and there was no further prosecution from anyone on this allegation that she had made. True? Like we, like we mentioned before when we talked about the goal of investigation and finding the truth and all that, yes, sir. and not wanting to deprive people of their freedom without being absolutely right, without follow-up from her, which would have led me to further investigation, the cell phone records, checking the, the car, canvassing again for witnesses, stuff about the hotel room, all that stuff that takes hours of investigation time. Yes. That, I would have had to set aside time to do that after the follow-up with her. Unfortunately, with APD, the caseload does not, you know, if I, I give her my card, I give her my contact information at the scene. Call me, we got to follow up on this. I call her, leave a message. Days go by, nothing. Um, unfortunately, the nature of the beast, I have to move on. Right. Um, so that's why it was closed. And so here we are in April, April of 2024, and you've not been provided with any more information than you had in May of 2013. Right. No, Ms. Bennett has still not contacted me. Right. And you've not received any more documents or any more information or any more phone records or anything since 2013. That is correct. But yet here you are testifying on this case that you closed in 2013. True? I'm here, sir. One moment, please. Yes. <clears throat> That's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any further cross? I don't have anybody else. Any redirect? Yes. I want to kind of leave off. One, one second, I can get a drink. I don't know. Going back. We have round. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. You good? Yes, ma'am. I want to kind of pick up where you left off. Um, you said that you last called her on May 19th. 2013, you left the message. That's correct. Okay. Do you know um, or have any knowledge if whether or not she moved out of that apartment complex? I do not. No. I stand the objection. Wait, let me ask you this. May 19th, 2013, is that about a week after this incident occurred? It'd be six days, yes. Six days from when she reported or six days from when it occurred? Well, it occurred on the 12th and the 13th, right? And then 19, so, yeah, six, five and six. Or the six and seven? 19, you said, right? Yeah. And I was there seven days, I'm sorry. Six and seven. Do you know if um, something happened with her child that prevented her from calling you? I have. It's, I stand yep. the objection. Do you have any knowledge if there were any other life circumstances that happened that prevented her from calling you? I have no knowledge of that. Now, Mr. Adams um, <coughs> asked you a few questions on Cross that I want to follow up with. Now, Mr. Adams asked you whether or not there was um, I think any information about a building being shot up, you recall that line of questioning? Yes. Okay. Did you have any reports about a building being shot up or solely the report from Ms. Bennett that her apartment D was shot up? There were no 911 calls that I remember from the 12th to 13th about any shootings in that complex. Any other building, the only information I had was what was given to me by Ms. Bennett. And Mr. Adams um, went through a line of questioning that um, the only information that was there is what Ms. Bennett told you. Do you remember that? Yes. And you responded in a way that said it wasn't just what she told me, 
but what I gathered from the other witnesses. Do you remember responding to his question that I, way? I do. Okay. Had you gotten a report that corroborated what no, Ms. Ben... You're right, he opened the door. Basis. He opened the door, Your Honor, when he crossed him. Mm -hmm. and he opened... He, he backed away from it, and then he opened the door with his cross. Objection to the speaking. Objection. Now approach, please. Now, Ms. Investigator Kirkman, you spoke um, very briefly about the distinction between a gunshot hole and gunshot defect. What is that distinction between a gunshot hole and a gunshot defect for you? Or to you, not a gunshot, a bullet hole and a bullet defect, I'm sorry. Well, a defect would be where the bullet doesn't totally penetrate and exit a structure, an item, a person. Uh, a defect would just be an indication made by a bullet. Now, Mr. Um, Adams, I want to pull up state's exhibit. I believe it's going to be 19 double A. Go back, I'm sorry. It'd be the picture of the window on the inside of the apartment. Right, right here. I'm looking at State Exhibit 16 um, AA as well as 17 AA. Um, Mr. Adams asks about whether or not you saw any glass in this area um, of the window. Did that surprise you not finding any glass in that area? Not particularly, because if you notice, the, the, the pane's not broken, 
So any large shade sheds of glass would not, not have fallen out. And I don't know, you know, and, and just the, the bullet going through the only glass that would have been dispelled is the actual hole that's cut out here where the bullet went through and just the speed of the bullet could have dusted it, vaporized it, the glass, that little bit of glass. So it wasn't totally surprising that no glass was found under the window. Now, when she provided you the information um, that she gave you, um, did she provide you with Micah Anderson's full date of birth? She did. Let me make sure. Give me one second. Sure. Yes, 810 of 1987 is what she provided me. And she gave you, um, did she ever try to make up a name for the person that she did not know and only identified as Thug's brother? No. Okay. And she told you about other relationships that she, these individuals had with her child's father. Was she able to provide that they were friends? Friends that they hung out the night before. Okay. Correct. And is this information that one would give if they were just trying to make up a story? Objection for speculation. And at any point in time, did she ever try to? advise that either Thug, DK, or Thug's brother um, shot, the win shot the bullet hole that came through the window. Did she ever tell you that? No, she did not. Did she, what was the only shot that she put with DK? Was that the one in the living room? The one above the couch in the living room. And in your experiences as a law enforcement officer, has you had occasion in which individuals do not call and report shots fired calls? Or do not report if there's a gunshot? Um, not always call the police if there are gunshots. Yes, no, Repeat the question, please. Sure. Have you had experiences in which sometimes residents or citizens do not always call police if shots fired, if shots fired are heard? Yes. And again, with this case, um, you advise you put it on the back burner because she did not call you back. Correct. And you do not know why she did not call you. I do not know. Okay, court's indulgence. Yes. Excuse, um, Investigator Kirkman. 
All right, Investigator Kirkman, I'm going to permanently excuse you, witness. Thank you for your patience with us. You're free to go about your usual duties and advocation. Um, just don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys in this case, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to take five minutes before we call our next witness? Okay, all right. Uh, is your next witness uh, outside? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, all right. Um, we're going to take five minutes, ladies and gentlemen. As soon as everybody is taking comfort, we'll, we'll come back in. All rise. Councils for the state. Um, how many more witnesses you got for the day? They have a motion regarding that last witness that we may need to take up at the end of the day, uh, which will be Mr. Walter Murphy. So we would ask if we could just take the next two and then deal with um, the motions regarding Mr. Murphy at the conclusion of the day. Um, and, and be, oh yeah, and we did have one of our witnesses um, who we learned this morning is in ICU at the hospital. So excuse me, ER at the hospital. And so we're trying to get a status update as to um, his condition. You have other witnesses you can call, correct? We have at least two others that we can call for today. We are asking if the third one can be excused, um, given the fact that there is a potential motion for that third witness. Is that the motion, Mr. Steele, you filed um, motion Lemmy number 47? That's true, Your Honor. Um, in taking a look at the motion um, that... Is the is the it's in a right? I I assume that it pertains to a proffer interview. Is that correct? With Mr. Hudson and Mr. Murphy. Correct, Your Honor. All right. Is the state going to use anything that uh, as part of? Are you going to redact that particular interview in terms of what Mr. Hudson may be <clears throat> indicating or saying? Yes, Your Honor. It's the state's intention to not. If Has we have to play the proffer to um to redact that, and then Mr. Steele and I can talk about particularly what. What it's going to depend, of the video. Is it going to depend upon what Mr. Um, Murphy testifies to? It is, very much right. so. Um, I would just recommend that you have that in uh, in pocket so that for Mr. Murphy uh, testifies so it doesn't delay our proceedings. Oh, okay. All right. Is it okay if we release him or no? All right. <laughs> Anything else about that, uh, about that Mr. Steele? In terms of, uh, I would agree that Mr. H any statements of Mr. Hudson would be inadmissible, his that, attorney. That was all, sir. Thank you. All right. So, um, so state, if you're planning on using that proper, I mean, using that proper for impeachment or any other purpose, I would say you would need to redact Mr. Hudson's statements, okay. his his lawyer statements. So that's what that's what I'll I'll preliminary rule upon. Yes, Mr. Short. Your Honor, I I wanted to identify another possible issue. I have not recently. Have you filed a motion? I have not. It applies to everyone, and I'm just trying to bring it to the court's attention. Um, it's, it doesn't just affect me or my client. Okay, well, remember what I told you in my administrative order. This is what causes delay. Well, that's why I'm so bringing it up now. So file a motion. Okay. All right. What is the issue? I'm going to invite you to file a motion because that's just because this is what happens. I, I understand. So what is the issue you want to raise to me? The DA 
that is conducting the proffer of Walter Murphy is a defense attorney that the jurors have already met in the course of this case during jury selection. It's Suri Chada Jimenez. That strikes me as unseemly and potentially problematic. I thought it was Mr. Hudson. No, That's... Mr. Hudson's the defense attorney. Suri Chada Jimenez was the district attorney at the time conducting the proffer. That strikes me as problematic. I have not Research and you need to research it, and we need to take it up if that's the case. But um, right now, um, right now, without anything more, there's nothing for me to rule upon. I understand, Your Honor. I okay. just wanted to bring it to the court's attention. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. We're in recess. Give me five minutes. <laughs>
Dan. All right, summon Miss Lackners, please. All right, Miss Latners, good afternoon, madam. If you would please approach the witness stand once you get there, if you would please turn and be sworn as a witness. Yeah, she needs to be sworn again. Sharon Latners, S H A R O N L A T N E R S. Good afternoon, Ms. Lackers. Uh, welcome back. Thank you, sir. Uh, are, I wanted to ask you a couple questions. And so before I do, I wanted to approach you man, with what's been labeled as one Bravo Bravo and two Bravo Bravo. If you can, Ms. Lackers, uh, can you look over one and two Bravo Bravo? And look up at me when you are ready. What, uh, how do you recognize those, Ms. Lattner? The cat report is the one I print out. My name is on the top. And now on audio, I listen to it. It's only, my niches only come about. And are they a fair and accurate depiction of the cat report and 911 call? For the incident that you're discussing? Yes. Your Honor, this time the state moves to tender and add the state's exhibits one and two, Bravo, Bravo. Have they been shown to the defense counsel? They have been previously shared, yes, Your Honor. Any objection to states one and two, Bravo, Bravo? Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, objection to uh, the cabinet report is a uh, hearsay confrontation clause um, case cited previously. No, I'm good. I'm good. Um, all right, I'm going to overrule your objection, sir. And uh, I'll admit states one and two, bravo, bravo, over objection. Maybe publish as you see fit. Thank you, Your Honor. The state moves to publish a specific one, bravo, bravo. All right, sir. Ms. Latins is the uh, tab report the 911 call that we're here to discuss for the events on April 12, 2015? Yes. Ms. Ladders, going through this category, what was the incident number for this act, or just this category? 15102 What time, or let me start with this, what, what was the call type? Person, person shot. And what type of priority response does a person shot get within APD? Um, prior to two, should be a prior to two. What was the location for this person shot? It came in at 1987 Fremont Street, Southeast. Was that location ever changed? Yes, it was. What was that location changed to? 2110 Brownsmill Road, Southeast. What time was this call initiated? 9.47.56 p.m. hours. What time did officers first respond? Or I should say arrive on scene. 9.52.45 p.m. hours. And Ms. Landers, what zone and beat was this call in within the city of Atlanta? In zone three, beat three tens beat. Now, have you seen before, Ms. Latners, where the location on an incident is changed? Yes. 
What are these circumstances for that? The caller can provide the location they are at, and once the officer get him out investigated, he find out the incident happened at a different location. Now, Ms. Landers, I want to talk about um, some of the incident remarks uh, under unit times on page one. Do you see that first line where it says DS at 9.48 p.m.? Yes. Can you explain what that means to the jury? D DS means dispatch. And is that the address they were dispatched to? It was dispatched in 1987 Fremont Street, Southeast. Now, immediately believe that it has BU. What does uh, that code stand for? BU is backup. And then immediately beneath that on the third line, it has E in? In, in route. And so those first three lines are units. Uh, are they en route to 1987 Fremont Street? Yes. Now, I want to turn your attention to this ladder to page two, line six, where it says uh, CT and then it has the numbers 50. What does that mean? You said line two, page two, line six? Yes, ma'am. At Call. 1 uh, p.m. You said CT? Uh, well, the call type was C, and then it says 10.01.02 p.m., and then um, at the far right it says CT 50. Call type equals 50, which is, that's our statement for Atlanta Police 50. Plain talk is person shot. Now, Ms. Lanners, I'm going to ask you a couple questions about uh, moving further along. If you see at 10.23 p.m., it has the APD code of LC. Location change. And at 10.23.23, what was the location change to? It shows uh, Browns Mill and Harper Road. Would that be an intersection? Yes, sir. Now, immediately beneath that, do you see that second LC, Ms. Lanners? At 10.36 p.m.? 10.36.38? Yes, ma'am. What yes. happened at that? Uh, what does that mean afterwards where it says E.N. Grady? Grady is en route to Grady Hospital. And if you move the sliders uh, a little further down where it has unit 21 LC at 10.51 p.m., can you explain for the jury what that indicates? What line are you on? Uh, it is... Unit 21? Yes, ma'am. Unit 21 is one of the head commanders for that zone. And what are they doing uh, at 10, 36, 38, according to the cat report? 10, 21 has a location change, and he's en route to Grady. And do you see if they ever uh, put a call sign in the cat report for ever arriving at Grady? Amy, arrive. And you should see unit 5338 arrive, but that's at Brown's Mill. And if you see this line is at 10 1 p.m. where it has location change at Grady? At 10 58 p.m. Now, this line is, I want to talk a little bit about the CAD narrative for this call. Uh, at the bottom of page two, can you explain for the jury it starts at 9 47 p.m.? Can you talk through what this indicates in the CAD report? The 9 1 received the call from a person advised at 1987, Fremont Street, Southeast, a person been shot. Then the second line at 948, 28 p.m., the 911 operator by her supervisor about the call at that location. And she also notified Grady, a person been shot. Then the next line at 948, 28, the dispatch advised 
as the uh, supervisor of that zone, 3396 and 3395, do they copy the call at that location a person been shot? Ms. Lammers, does 3396 and 3395 have any significance to you in terms of those unit numbers? Are they uh, supervisors, patrol officers? What do those unit numbers indicate? They are supervisors. They are the sergeant of the zone. And... Uh, does it follow up and say 26 year old patient after those sergeants were notified? Correct. The units out in the zone advise dispatcher that a person out of that zone, a 26 year old male patient, has alert conscious and breathing, but he has been shot. Now, Ms. Ms. Lather, starting to page three, I want to ask you a couple questions. What does the call code DQ mean? DQ is when the unit do a driver search on his MDT for a person. And what does, uh, what kind of information can come back from that? Uh, you can get if a person want it. And what, uh, within the call signs that <clears throat> APD uses, what is QW? It's not APD, it's GCIC use QW. And what does that mean? Wanted person. Now, in this town report, who uh, was the, do you see any driver's license queries or DQ in this category? I do. Uh, can you explain for the jury what you see and who they were? You see a DQ for Kristen James. You want me to do the date of birth or just a person name? What year was, it, was Kristen James born? 1997. Is there a second query? Let me see. Terrence Moody. What year were they born? 1998. And do you see a third query of a driver's license search? You see one for Davis Connells. And what year were they born? 1993. And do you see a fourth query in this category? You see one for... Uh, we did Davis. We did Davis. You see one for white. I see one for white, and date of birth is 1987. Now, uh, what kind of reasons, or how does someone get when this category indicates these license checks? Um, how does that come up? The officer asks the subject for his driver license, and he goes on his MDT and want, and run a DQ check. That's for your license. And whatever comebacks on your license from GCIC, all that information comes back to the officer on his MDT. Now, Ms. Lander, do you see the last two lines in this cat area? Yes. What is, can you tell the jury what QB indicates? Vehicle. He's running a tag number. What tag was ran in this case? BZE2206, Georgia plate. And what is RQ indicated? That's a license plate number, the same. Did that pertain to the same vehicle that they did the, uh, that you just described? Yes. Now, Ms. Lathers, uh, I'd also handed you two Bravo Bravo. Does that correspond with this cab report that we just walked through? Yes. And is that the 911 call that initiated this task force? Yes. And all right, this time the state publishes state's exhibit two Bravo, Bravo for the jury. You can publish it. I, I mean. Yes, I'm just going to issue you right now. Thank you. Thank you. And that's an I went up for the 6180. What's the address of your emergency? Yo, oh. We've been at the emergency. 
What's the address? Hey, Neil, what's the address? Neil, what's the address? 1987 Fremont. 1987 Fremont? 1987 Fremont, somebody shot. Okay, hold on for the ambulance, sir. Don't hang up, okay? I'm still on the line with you, sir. Yeah. Hello? Yes, we're holding for the ambulance. Great. EMS 785, what's the address of the emergency? It's 1987. Oh, sir, calm down. Let me give her the address. It's 1987 Fremont. And repeat that address, please, for verification. 1987 Fremont. Okay. And is this going to be a house or an apartment? A house. Okay. We have already started an ambulance. I'm going to get some information from you while they're on the way. What's the phone number you're calling from? 770 Mm-hmm. Okay. And we do have help already started. Uh, what's your name? My name is D'Angelo. And D'Angelo, tell me exactly what happened. Now, we was at the room. Now, we was at the seat. We was at the gas station. And, um, my partner was trying to talk to a girl, but I guess they thought we was following them. And then they pulled up on the, and just started. And we pulled out. And then we pulled out from the gas station. And then we got away. And then we met. We, we ended up driving a, a back speedway. And then we ended up seeing them again. They, they ended up shooting. And somebody, okay. came, somebody ended up getting hit. Okay. Are you with the patient now? Huh? Are you with the patient now? Yes. Okay, how old is the patient? How old, how old are you? How old are you? 26. Okay. How are you? And is the patient male or female? Huh? Hello? Yes, ma'am. He's 26. Okay, listen, I was asking you whether the male or female is he awake? He's a male. Okay, is he awake? Is he conscious? <laughs> He's a he's cause he's talking. Okay, is he breathing? Okay, Atlanta, go ahead and start firing PD, please, 785. They're in a route on 6180. Thank you. Is the assailant still nearby, D'Angelo? Who? <laughs> is the person who shot, are they still nearby? No, no, ma'am. Okay. And is there any serious bleeding? Huh? Is there any serious bleeding? Is, is blood spurting or pouring out of him anyway? Yes, he's bleeding. He's bleeding. He's still bleeding. D'Angelo, calm down. I'm trying to ask you these questions. Okay, calm down. You see the man, sir? Is he completely alert? Man, he's alert. He's talking. Okay, he what part of his, listen, what part of his body was injured? What part of his body was injured? He got shot in the face. Okay, listen, do you guys have the bleeding under control? No, ma'am. Come on. Listen, they're already in route. This isn't delaying them, okay? Is there more than one wound? No, I'm finna hang up. I already hear the police okay. coming. Okay, listen, I can help you to help them until they get there. Sit down, sit down. Okay, listen, I'm sending the paramedics to help you now. Stay on the line. I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Do you guys have a clean, dry cloth or a towel? Or can you take your shirt off? That you can apply pressure to the wound until they get there. The answer? Hello? Miss Lammers, when we had talked about the license plates that are not license plates. Driver's license queries that we also did. If you turn to page three on this tab report, do you see any query for someone with first name D'Angelo? Yes. What time was that query? 1038 56 hours p.m. Thank you, Ms. Lattner. Cross. No questions. Anybody else? All right, may Ms. Lattner be permanently or temporarily excused the witness.
temporarily, Your Honor. See, Miss Landers, I'm, don't be looking at me that way, all right? All right. Madam, good to see you again. I'm going to temporarily excuse your witness. We'll call you when we need you again, okay? Thank you very much. Don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys in this case. All right, call your next witness, please. Yes, Your Honor. The state calls D'Angelo White to the stand. All right, summon Mr. White, please. Your Honor, may I briefly approach with the defense counsel? You may. All right, ladies and gentlemen, can I ask your uh, assistance? And uh, I'm just going to give you a short recess, and then we'll go ahead and I get less than five minutes. That we need to, court needs to take up just a brief matter, and then we'll bring you right back in, okay? So don't get comfortable. All right. All rise. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Our jury is not here. Um, members of the media, if you would not videotape our next witness due to security concerns, and please do not videotape where he's coming from. All right, um, Sergeant Brown, if you'll get our witness, please. Okay, so noted, still denied, but no harm in asking. Right. 
Mr. White, you can have a seat. When the jury comes out, I'm going to ask you to stand, okay? And then we're going to swear you in as a witness, all right? Okay. All right. Summon our jurors, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, Mr. Atkins, call your next witness, please. Yes, Your Honor. The state calls Mr. D'Angelo White. All right, Mr. White, can you uh, please uh, take the oath from the from Sergeant Ingram, please? Okay. This is why I just want to give the truth, the truth, not the truth. Yes. All right. Mr. White, do me a favor. Pull your chair up as close as you can to the microphone and speak directly into it so we can all hear you, okay? Yes. Thank you, sir. D E A N G E L O W H I T E. Good afternoon, sir. Can you tell the jury where you grew up? Cleveland Avenue. Uh, is that Cleveland Avenue here in Atlanta? Yes, sir. What part of Cleveland Avenue did you grow up in? Oh, like, like what street? Oh, hey, we were road. How close when you grew up were you to the... Are you familiar with Coin Laundry on Old Hayfield? Yes, sir. Uh, were you near or relatively close by to that location growing up? Yes, sir. Now, growing up... Uh, did you have any siblings or family members that lived with you? No, no sir. Um, did you ever, uh, I'll put it this way, did you ever get to know, or are you familiar with that area as far as the land? Yes, sir. Did you ever spend any time in any other areas in Atlanta? Any other neighborhood? Yes, sir. What other parts of Atlanta did you spend time in? Four season at uh, Lakewood, Canterville. How, I'll start with Four Seasons. How, where's Four Seasons in relation to the Cleveland Avenue area in Atlanta? What you mean? Is it close by? Is it far away? Like five, ten minute drive. What about Lakewood? Five minutes. And uh, what about Mechanicsville? Five, ten minutes. And uh, would people, or I'll put it this way, would the schools you went to, uh, were any of those neighborhoods, did you get to know people who grew up in those neighborhoods and went to school with you? Yeah. Do all of those neighborhoods feed to the same type, middle schools, high schools, stuff like that? Or they did Different. Okay. Now, growing up, uh, were you closer, did you spend more time with it? <coughs> People that grew up in Cleveland or people that grew up in Four Seasons, Lakewood, or Mechanicsville? Cleveland. Okay. Now, who did you know in the Lakewood area? Did you have any family or relatives that grew up in Lakewood? I had an auntie. Okay. Uh, did you ever become familiar with people who grew up in Lakewood in terms of like friends growing up? No, not really. Now, uh, sir, how old are you uh, here today? 27. And uh, where did you go to school? Southside, South Atlanta. 
I turned to school. Did you ever uh, graduate? No. Um, how far did you go? Ninth grade. Okay. Um, have you gotten or are you working on getting your GED? Well, I'm in prison right now getting my GED. Do you have programs for that where you are? Yes. Now, um, how long have you been in prison? Seven years. How much more time do you have to go? 36 more months to max out. All right. What do you plan on doing when you get out? Get a job and work. Okay. What kind of uh, industry do you plan on working in? Construction, Overruled. Food industry, construction, business? I mean, I don't know right now, you feel me? Oh, I got you. Um, let me ask you this. For what, uh, what was it so, like? What case was it, or how did you end up in prison? I got two armed robbers, hijacking, possession of a firearm, like a bit fitting. What year was it that, did you plead to those? Yes, sir. Um, what county was it? Fort County. Okay. Um, do you have any other felonies uh, besides what you just mentioned within the last 10 years? Yes, sir. Uh, what are they? Theft by receiving stolen auto, answering a vehicle. And uh, do you have anything else up to now? Or what county was the that power receiving in and out of? Fulton, Clayton. Okay. Now, did you, uh, Did you ever have a friend or ever know anyone that went by the name Pete? I don't even know him. Okay. Did you ever uh, have a friend or know anyone who went by the name Neil? I don't know him either. Did you ever know or uh, be friends with someone who went by the name Terry? I don't know him either. Did you ever know or were friends with uh, someone who went by the name Crucial? I don't even know them. Now, <clears throat> did you, uh, let me put it this way, sir. Did you choose to be here today? No, nah, I don't even know why I'm here. This is not my case. I don't know what's going on, you feel me? I don't even know to be here. I'm serving my own time. Do you want to be here? No, nope, for what? Is uh, people who are, or I'll put it this way, um, how is it, or is there any impact in being here today considering where you, you being in prison? Objection made. I sustain the objection, you can rephrase. How is people being forced to testify and produce to testify in prison view? Favorably or is it negative? Only for one, when you came and told me, when you see me down the road, I told you I would testify on what? This is not my case. This is not having nothing to do with me, period. Did, uh, does that mean an investigator went and met you? Yeah, you came and seen me, what, two black ladies, one first time, one the second time. And before you saw me, um, we, you were the investigator I was with. We never, we didn't know each other from the campaign. Is that fair to say? Right. And when I walked in that day and saw you as my investigator, I didn't know what I was coming to talk to you about, did you? For sure, I didn't. Um, did we talk about that? Did we discuss with the investigator and I some questions about something that happened to a friend of yours back on April 12, 2015? It's not my friend. I don't even know him. You keep yeah, I'm telling you I don't know him. Is he the cousin of a friend of yours? No. Do you remember uh, looking at any photographs from a shooting from April 12, 2015? Yeah, that you put in my face that you showed me. Did you recognize any of those photographs? 
A couple, but I don't know them like that. Now, Mr. White, I'm going to approach with what's been marked as State's Exhibit 72, Bravo, Bravo. This is a I'm going to show you, sir, 72 Bravo Bravo. Now, earlier we talked about you growing up in Lakewood. Uh, do you recognize any streets or areas on that map? Dobbs Elementary, Browns Mill Road. How do you recognize the <coughs> My auntie stayed in Lakewood. I went to Bryant, man, I went to Dobbs Elementary when I was younger. Is it a fair and accurate, uh, th does it look like where Dobbs Elementary and the roadways and Browns Mill that you grew up around? Yes. All right, this time the state moves to tender the evidence states exhibit 72 Bravo Bravo. Any objection to state 72 Bravo Bravo? All right, hearing, hearing none. It's admitted, maybe published as you see fit. Published in 72 Bravo Bravo. <laughs> now, sir, if you can look at that copy we have before you, there's a screen that's to your immediate left, and there's kind of a yellow hazy screen behind you. It's probably easier, but to look at the one that's closest to you, just close to you. Now, um, in general, the area depicted in this map, would you say that's Lakewood? You see Dawes Elementary and Brown Road. Okay. Uh, now, I'm going to, you want to have briefly approach to show something on screen? You may. So, this is how, well, could you show the jury where Dobbs Elementary School that you went to when you were, uh, that you attended as a child on that map? It said on the screen. Would you mind circling it? Uh, the screen that the jury's looking at is a little hard to read. Would you mind circling on that map? Or uh, is it the top, the bottom, or? Uh, I mean. Do you see what the mouse is, sir? If I, can see, if I can see it, I know they can see it. Your screen's a little better quality, but just asking you, do you see where it's zoomed in now? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Now, you had mentioned Brownsville Road. Do you see that road, Brownsville Road, behind Dobbs Elementary? <clears throat> to my Maryland Drive? Uh, do you see Brownsville Road? Do you see where Dobbs Elementary School is on that map that you just saw? Uh -huh. Yeah. What's the road immediately behind it? Maryland Drive. And what is the other street other than uh, Maryland Drive? That's the only thing you're showing on my screen. Uh, do you see that gray line at the very uh, bottom left of the screen? What is it, Lakewood Trail? Uh, yep, between Lakewood Trail and Dallas Elementary, you see a roadway. I don't think you saw any Madden Drive, Primary Road. Okay. So you see Browns Mill Road there. Now, on Browns Mill Road, well, let me ask you this. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Um, is there, do you see where it says secure trailer lots across the street from Dobbs Elementary? What is that? Truck and stop, baby. Okay. Has that been there a while? Yes. Now, what roadway, what's that main road there that Dobbs Elementary is on and the truck stop is, sir? Say Harper Road. Um, oh. Now, you see that thick black line um, between Dobbs Elementary and where the truck stop is? It's my in blue. Yeah. It may be blue. Yeah, it's blue on your screen. What roadway is that?
At the top, it looks like it says signal. Uh, do you know where that signal is on Brownsville? Yes. What's the other road up in Brownsville that kind of crosses where that signal is? Front map, the Queen of Drive. Are you? Have you ever heard of Jonesboro Road? Yes. Uh, is that sicko? The part of that sicko, uh, is it or is it not on some of Jonesboro Road? Yes. Is Kyle Elementary School on Jonesboro Road? Yes. Now, that sicko. How are you familiar with it? Have you ever been there? Did you ever? How do you know that sicko? So it's my auntie stayed in Lakewood. Would you ever go there to like get drinks or snacks or something like that growing up? Gas, put in the car. Did you, uh, that makes sense. How, how long did it take you to get there from where you grew up at your auntie's house? Was it two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes? Five minutes walking this. Okay, so you can walk there. Yeah. Did you ever know any of the people that work there or get familiar with them? Mm -hmm. Nah, I mean, people who probably work in there probably for me or me for probably coming in now. Would you ever go there and hang out there with any friends of yours in that area? Yeah. Uh, what would you, how often would y'all hang out in that sick car? Like daily, weekly, a couple times a month, once a year? I ain't really, I ain't really just hanging on the street like that, you feel me? Gotcha. Would you typically go up there daytime or nighttime? Anytime I feel like. Was it, do you remember, was it open 24 hours or how long, how late did that sicko stay open? I can't recall, but I know it ain't probably, probably like 24 hours. Okay. Now, I'm going to, Show defense counsel what's marked as 54 Bravo Bravo. Your Honor, I'm handing the witness what's been marked as 54 Bravo Bravo. Mr. White, do you recognize 54 Bravo Bravo? That's the sicko on John Bell Road. Is it a fair and accurate depiction of the sicko that we were just talking about? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, the state moves to publish State's Exhibit 54 Bravo Bravo into evidence. Well, first, you got to get it admitted. So, any objection to uh, State's 54 Bravo Bravo? All right, State's 54 Bravo Bravo is admitted and may not be published as you see fit. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Could we not scroll through the other photos, please? Thank you. Now, Ms. White, is that the sicko we were talking about? Yes. Um, is 
like if, if you and me were the cameraman, right? Like that took the camera. What what road is that that the cameraman would kind of be sitting in the middle of that took this photo? Is it Brownsville or Jonesboro? Like the road on the bottom of that photo. You know what I'm saying? Like, why is I'm here? This way? This is not my case. I ain't got nothing on the why I'm even here, man. You feel me? I understand you, sir. Um, I just going to ask you some questions. Do you know what that road is on the bottom of 54 Bravo Bravo, sir? I don't need people to be here. Why is I'm here? This way? I just wanted to ask you, do you know what that street is on the bottom that's in that photograph before you and on the screen to your left? What they got to do with me? I'm just asking if you know the street, sir. I don't need people to be here. I just keep asking you the same thing. Like... Ms. Wright? Do you know that street on the bottom of 54 Bravo Bravo? Yeah, but what it got to do with me? What street is it? You see what it says? It says John Bell Road. And what you see where, you know, when you go to a gas pump, they'll have the neon lights with the price of gas? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, what about? Do you see that red and green neon light? Kind of in the back of this photograph? Yeah. What's that road that I say perpendicular from the Jonesboro Road we just talked about? I don't know. Uh, is it Brownsville Road? I guess. Do you guess or do you not? I don't know. Now, Now, I'm going to show you a couple things. Like, well, before I do that, Your Honor, I'm going to show defense counsel what is 63 Bravo Bravo through 71 Bravo Bravo. Your Honor, I'm approaching the witness and hand on what's marked as 63 Bravo Bravo through 71. Uh, Ms. White, starting with 63 Bravo Bravo, do you uh, recognize that? Well, I can say Joan Barrow. Do you see that sicko, or, or are you familiar with what's depicted in that? 
from growing up in the neighborhood? Can you ask me the same question? And uh, just asking you, are you familiar with that when you grew up? It's like. And it's a sicko. Is it a fair and accurate depiction of how that sicko in Jonesboro Road area looked when you were growing up? If it's still the same, I've been gone seven years. It's still the same. Was it before, was 2015 before uh, you went to prison? If it looked like that. Your Honor, this time the state moves to tender that at 63 Bravo Bravo. Any objections to say 63 Bravo Bravo? Any counsels? I hear none. 63 Bravo Bravo is admitted. Maybe publish as you see fit. Thank you, Your Honor. Publishing 63 Bravo Bravo. So, uh, sir, is this the Jonesboro Road we were just discussing? Yeah. And is that the sicko we were just talking about on the right in that photograph? Yeah. Now, I'm going to uh, show you 64 Bravo Bravo. Do you recognize 64 Bravo Bravo? Why is I'm here, man? Mr. White, I'm just asking you if you recognize 64 Bravo Bravo. I don't pull to be here. Do you recognize 64 Bravo Bravo, sir? I don't pull to be here. I pull to be in chain gang prison. I don't even know why I'm here. This ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't even know why I'm here. Mr. White, why do you not want to testify? Talk about anything today? Testify? This ain't got nothing to do with me. Hold on, Mr. White, one second. Um, I'm going to overrule your objection, Mr. Matthews. A acid answer was his objection, and I've overruled it. So you can answer the question, sir. Counsel's question, okay? Mr. White, why do you not want to talk here? Because this don't have nothing to do with me. This is not my case. I'm already doing a 10 year bid. That I'm doing two arm robberies and hijacking this doesn't have nothing to do with me. I understand that, Mr. White. Specifically, just with that photograph, do you recognize the roadway in 64 Bravo Bravo? <clears throat> no. Do you, have you ever looked at that photograph before and recognized it? No. I don't pull to be here. I'm going to keep sending out it. Mr. Mike, I understand that, Mr. White. So you're saying that you've never seen that photograph before? No. You've never uh, are familiar with it? No. All right, Mr. White. Uh, I'm going to show you 65 Bravo Bravo. Have you ever seen 65 Bravo Bravo before? With all due respect, man, I'm ready to go back to prison. If it Ms. White, uh, I understand that. I'm asking you, if, you know, do you recognize 65 Bravo Bravo? What do they got to do with me? D'Angelo White, what they got to do with me? Mr. White, can you just take a look at 65 Bravo Bravo? Just tell me if you recognize it. Hey man, this ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm ready to go back to prison. I'm just asking you, you just take a look at that photograph and just let me know if you recognize You disturbed me. I don't pull to be here. I'm just trying to defend my 36th month out of 10 years and go home. Feel me? I don't pull to be here. I understand that, sir. I'm just asking you, do you recognize the roadways in 65 Bravo Drop? Regardless if you want to be here, do you recognize it? So you're going to force me to be here? Y'all going to force me to be here? Now that you're here, Mr. White, I'm just asking you, do you recognize 65 Bravo Bravo? I don't vote to be here, man. I'm ready to go back to prison. Keep telling you on that. Your Honor, may I approach briefly? Mr.
Now, this is why I'm going to grab these. Let's see this one. Mr. White, you did have a friend named Pooh growing up. Isn't that correct? No, why you keep trying to tell me I had a friend named Pooh? Mr. White, do you remember when Lieutenant Oliphant and myself met you for the first time that we talked about a little earlier? I, yeah, I don't know that dude. I just seen him do one time. That don't mean he's my friend because I met him one time. So you do know something about the name Pooh? I met him one time, but I don't know him. And... Is it true or not true that when I met you, you never talked to me before, you my lieutenant, do you remember a time that Pooh got shot? No. Now, do... Have you ever been, so, Mr. White, do you recall looking at photographs of individuals that you were familiar with growing up when Lieutenant Oliphant, excuse me, Lieutenant Baker and myself met you? No. Do you remember recognizing someone you knew as Neil? Isn't that correct? No. Do you remember recognizing someone you knew as Crucial? Isn't that correct? No. Have you ever heard of Love Crucial? No. You've never heard of Love Crucial in this mm, mm Can you name any club in the city of Atlanta? I don't go club. Okay. So, do you remember when I met you there with the 10 old font that I asked you, is it like Club Crucial? And you were like, yes, your friend named Crucial. Do you remember that, sir? No. Do you remember... Um, a blue Ford Escape photograph that we showed you with my investigator. Only way I remember because you showed it to me, yeah. But when I showed it to you, do you remember talking about that vehicle? No. Do you remember telling Lieutenant Baker and I that that was your friend Neil's rental car on April 12, 2015? You gonna keep trying to make me remember something? This is... Oh, this is not my case. I'm keep telling you that, man. This is not my case. I don't pull to be here, man. Mr. White, is your, your first name is Angela, is that correct? You got me here. Your Honor, the state's going to play State's Exhibit 2, Bravo, Bravo. It's already been hit. All right. And that's the 916180. What's the address of your emergency? Please, please, it's the emergency. What's the address? Hey, Neil, what's the address? Neil, what's the address? 1987 Fremont. 1987 Fremont? 1987 Fremont. Somebody shot. Okay, hold on for the ambulance, sir. Don't hang up, okay? Neil, hurry up, hurry up. Still on the line with you, sir. Yeah. Hello? Yes, we're holding for the ambulance. EMS 785, what's the address of the emergency? It's 1987. Is that somebody been shot? Sir, calm down. Let me give her the address. 1687 Fremont. And repeat that address, please, for verification. 1987 Fremont. Okay. And is this going to be a house or an apartment? A house. Okay, we have already started an ambulance. I'm going to get some information from you while they're on the way. What's the phone number you're calling from? 770 Mm-hmm. 5580. Okay. And we do have help already started. Uh, what's your name? My name's D'Angelo. And D'Angelo, tell me exactly what happened. Well, I'm just at the room. Well, we're at the gas station. And um, my partner was trying to talk to a girl, but I guess they thought we was following them, and then they pulled up on and just started, and we pulled out. 
And then we pulled off from the gas station, and then we got away. And then we met, we, we ended up driving a, a back speedway, and then we ended up seeing them here, and they, they ended up shooting. And somebody, okay. gave, somebody ended up getting hit. Okay. Are you with the patient now? Huh? Are you with the patient now? Yes. Okay, how old is the patient? How old, how old are you? How old are you? 26. Okay. Hurry up. And is the patient male or female? Huh? Hello? Yes, ma'am. You're 26. Okay, listen, I was asking you, was it a male or female? Is he awake? He's a male. Okay, is he awake? Is he conscious? He's a, he's cause he's talking. Okay, is he breathing? Okay, Atlanta, go ahead and start firing PD, please, 785. They're in Rattle, 6180. Thank you. Is the assailant still nearby, D'Angelo? Is who? Is the person who shot, are they still nearby? No, no, ma'am. Okay. And is there any serious bleeding? Huh? Is there any serious bleeding? Is, is blood spurting or pouring yes. out of him anyway? Yes, he's bleeding. He's bleeding. He's okay. bleeding. D'Angelo, calm down. I'm trying to ask you these questions. Okay, calm down. Okay. You see the man, sir? Is he completely alert? Man, he's alert. He's talking. He, okay, he what part of his, listen, what part of his body was injured? What part of his body was injured? He got shot in the face. Okay, listen, do you guys have the bleeding under control? No, ma'am, come on. Listen, they're already in route. This isn't delaying them, okay? Is there more than one wound? No, I'm finna hang up. I already hear the police coming. Okay, listen, I can help you to help them until they get there. Sit down, sit down. Okay, listen, I'm sending the paramedics to help you now. Stay on the line. I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Do you guys have a clean, dry cloth or a towel? Or can you take your shirt off? That you can apply pressure to the wound until they get there. The answer? Hello? Mr. White, is that 911 call? Is that 911 that you're still listening to? Do you call 911 after your friend proved you shot in the head? No, sir. They won't even me. That wasn't you on that 911 call? Did you call 911 for your friend too because you were concerned about it? I left because I had a fight on me. I left my phone so it wasn't me. I was on first offender probation. Got on, ran, ran through the cut. My sister came and picked me up on the side screen. Uh, so before the cops got there, you ran away because you were on first offender probation when this happened? Yes. Uh, did you have to call your sister to have her pick you up? Yes. Uh, were you, how close was Pooh to you when you got shot? Probably about 10 feet away from me. Were y'all, you were inside a car when Pooh got shot, right? Kiss. And Pooh was sitting in the passenger seat. Hey man, I don't like like you holding me against my will. Like I don't need people to be here. Like what do this got to do with me? Mr. White, I'm just asking you questions. Oh, uh, but this ain't got nothing to do with me. How long did it take your sister to come pick you up after you got shot? Excuse me, sir. I'm ready to go back to prison, man. You feel me? This ain't got nothing to do with me, man. You feel me? I serve time on my own bed. So you're a witness. I'm not no witness. Y'all brought me here. We're forced to be here. I'm showing the best now for what Mark is for, Rob, Rob. Mr. White, sir, I'm showing you for Bravo, Bravo. Do you recognize the person in for Bravo, Bravo? I see him one time. When you saw him, what was his name? Whatever you saying there. He's that, that's proof, correct? See, I don't know. I've seen him one time. But if you saw him, that was the person you knew was proof. Is that fair to say? It's been a long time ago. Does that look like proof, Mr. White? 
You got a half a head. How should I know? Before he was shot, when he was sitting in the passenger seat with you on April 12, 2015, did he have his full head? When you saw Pooh before you called your sister, did Pooh have all of his head, like you and me have sitting here or standing here here today? I don't know. That one time you saw Pooh, he didn't have half his head missing, did he? I don't know. So you don't recognize the person in that photo? I don't even know him. You keep like, why is I'm here? I keep telling you that. Now, I'm showing the witness what's been marked as three. I'm showing the defense counsel three Bravo Bravo. All right, Mr. White, I got a photo I'm going to show you. Seven Bravo Bravo. Now, Mr. White, do you recognize the person in Seven Bravo Bravo? And hey, me. Okay. Do you have more or less hair than you have today? I have less hair because I'm in prison. Now, is that a fair and accurate depiction of how you looked before going to prison? Yes. Now, Your Honor, this time the state moves for tender into evidence, state's exhibit 7 Bravo Bravo. Any objection states uh, 7 Bravo Bravo. Hearing no objection, uh, states 7 Bravo Bravo is admitted and may be published as you see fit. Published in state's exhibit 7 Bravo Bravo. Now, Ms. White, you were, I know I asked you this earlier, but how old, or I'll put it this way, how old were you on April, back in 2015? We can do the math together. I'm trying to calculate it myself. How old are you today? It's, it's April 2024 now. 27. Okay. So, in April of 2015, uh, how old would you have been? So, it would have been. Is it fair to say 2015 to 2024 is nine years? Yes. And you're 27 now, so 27 minus nine would be uh, 18, if I'm asked about it. Yeah. Now, in this photo on the screen, as you said, that's you. Uh, how old would you, got, would you guess you were in this photo? 18, 17. And that is the, so that's the age you were when Pooh got shot and you called your sister? Yeah. Right. Now, thank you, Mr. White. I'm going to show you what's been marked as three Bravo Bravo. Do you recognize the person in three Bravo Bravo? Yeah, I know him. Uh, who is that? Someone I went to school with in Lakewood. What'd you call? Mario. Did you ever call him Neil? You go by a different name. Uh, is, his first name is his first name Cornelius? I don't know. 
He older than me. Have you heard people call him Neil? Yeah. Is that, uh, Your Honor, at this time the state moves to tender the evidence state's exhibit five, hold me on this right, oh, three Bravo Bravo. Any objections to state's three Bravo Bravo? All right, three Bravo Bravo is admitted and may be published as you see fit. Thank you, Your Honor. Publishing three Bravo Bravo. Neil wouldn't have looked, he looks older than this photo would be in 2015, right? Is that fair to say? I guess. And Neil is Pooh's cousin, right? I guess. Yeah, we had with him. And when Pooh got shot, Neil was driving, right? And Pooh was in the passenger seat. And uh, now, when, when this, this, I'm going to show you uh, another photograph. I'm going to show you two. States Exhibit 5, Bravo, Bravo, and 6, Bravo, Bravo. Do you recognize uh, any of those photographs? Mr. White. What do these dudes got to do with me? Were they? I went the fuck. Do you recognize them? This ain't got nothing to do with me, man. I understand that, Mr. White. I'm just asking why you recognize him. Yeah, I recognize him. Yeah, I recognize him. Yeah, I recognize him. And then, this ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm gonna keep telling you that. I understand that, Mr. White. You ain't understanding me. Do you recognize the gentleman who was before you in this photograph? What do these dudes got to do with D'Angelo White? It ain't got nothing to do with me. Mr. White, I'm just asking you, do you recognize the people in the photograph? What do these do got to do with me? Mr. White, I'm just asking you, do you recognize It's just a simple question, Mr. White. What do they got to do with me? Do you recognize them, sir? Objection, do ask and answer. I stand the objection. Your Honor, can I ask the court's permission to instruct the witness to answer the question? You may. Answer the question, sir, if you're able. What do they got to do with me? Answer the question if you're able. I'm ready to go back to prison. Mr. White, just a yes or no. Do you recognize the people in the photograph of me? I'm ready to go back to prison. Mr. White, when Lieutenant Baker and I met you in prison, showed you those photographs, you recognize them, is that correct? What do that got to do with me? Mr. White, I just want to ask you, yes or no, do you recognize the people in that photograph? Do you recognize them? I recognize them because you told me who they were. Isn't that correct? I don't even know them. Basis. The propounders testify. Um, I'm going to overrule the objection. Mr. White, when Lieutenant Baker and I showed you those two photographs, you recognized them as people who were in the car that Neil was driving when Pooh got shot. Isn't that correct? It's like you trying to make me recognize them. I'm not trying to make you anything, Mr. White, but you're not answering my question. I'm just asking you, do you recognize them? I'm just trying to do my time and go home. I'm trying to go back to prison. No, I understand that, sir. No, you're not understanding me. Mr. White? Just yes or no, do you recognize the people in that photograph? I ain't got to answer nothing. I just ask you a question, Mr. White. I'm ready to go back to prison. I got to ask you some more questions before that, Mr. White, all right? Mr. White, so, Mr. White, so on April 12, 2015, 
Neil picked you up in a blue Ford Escape. Isn't that correct? I don't know. Who was in the driver's seat, right? Mr. White? Mr. White, do you remember having a phone conversation with Atlanta Police Department detectives on July 13th, 2015? <clears throat> Oh, I don't need Poe to be here. Keep telling you that. So, did you ever have a conversation with uh, Detective Dennis on July 13, 2015, about what happened to your friend Poe? No, but it's not my friend. You gonna keep making the man be my friend? But did someone named Poe get shot? You keep trying to make the man be my friend. So... He your friend? Mr. White? You don't remember, do you remember anything of what, do you remember having a conversation with Detective Dennis? No. Okay. Don't pull to be here, I'm gonna keep telling you that. I got my own crime, my own time, I'm doing. It don't have nothing to do with me. Now, Mr. White, uh, do you remember telling Detective Dennis on July 13, 2015 that Pooh was your partner? It's not my partner, man, I don't even know him. I'm just asking you. You keep trying to make the man be my partner, man. It's not my partner. I'm asking you what you said, Mr. White. Not it's not my partner. It's not my partner. It's not my partner. Now, do you recall Detective Dennis asking you what happened when Pooh got shot on July 13th, 2015? Oh, why don't you ask Doom for who, who you know? Do you remember responding to Detective Dennis? It was me, um, my partner, my partner's cousin, the one who got shot. And I really, I mean, there was five of us in the car. But we was coming up the gas station at Sicko on Jonesboro Road, and the car behind us, you know, the car was in front of us. He was driving like my partner was driving, like he was driving how he drives, how he normally drives because he was in our hood, you know what I'm saying. Do you recall telling Detective Dennis that on July 13th, 2015? No. Do you recall Detective Dennis asking you, was he driving fast? They felt like he was driving fast or something? I don't pull to be here. Why you keep? I, what, you, what do you not understand? What does y'all not understand? Do you recall Mr. White responding? That's how he felt, but we're not going, we were not going anything but like court. You know what I'm saying? Do you remember that, Mr. White? I'm trying to go back to prison. Do you know what I'm saying? I understand that, sir. Now, do you recall, Mr. White, do you recognize anyone in this courtroom here today? No. Have you ever seen anyone in the court before or ever know that? No. Now, Ms. White, do you recall telling Detective Dennis on July 13, 2015? You said, have, I'll ask you this, Ms. White. Have you ever heard of someone that goes by the name of Young Fella? The world know him. He's a rapper. Okay. Now, did you ever know him from Cleveland Avenue area? No. Do you recall telling Detective Dennis, the rapper, you know, the rapper, young fella? What the fuck? I ain't telling him. What are you talking about, man? Do you recall telling Detective Dennis, all right, the rapper, young fella, he was kin to the man who was in front of him. So I guess he thought we were pushing up on him, like trying to either rob him or do something to him or set him up. And I know him. We don't even know who's in front of us. We're just driving. I don't even, how you going to make me know him? I know him because you feel me. He's a rapper, yeah. You gonna make me know him? I don't feel him. <coughs> he don't know me. Is he in the courtroom here today? Of course. And Mr. White, do you recall saying we got to the Sicko? We got to the Sicko gas station on Jonesboro Road at the cemetery, and that is where they go at too. The rapper's cousin, Young Thug's partner, who would be with him. Man, what are you talking about? Now, is there a cemetery on Jonesboro Road? I don't know. Now, do you recall Tech Dennis asking what's his name? And you said, I don't know his name. And then Tech Dennis asked you what is his nickname? And you said Ben. Do you recall that? I don't know him. Have you ever heard of an OG Ben? No. Do you recall 
telling the tech to do this, so I guess he felt like he felt like that everybody know on his Instagram, his Instagram name OG Bentley. So he felt like I guess he felt like everybody know OG Bentley. He be having some money on him. You know what I'm saying? Do you recall that? Do you recall Detective Dennis after you described him? What did he look like? And you responded, he's kind of big and light skinned. What do this got to do with me? Are you asking me all type of relevant questions that ain't got nothing to do with me? I ain't shoot nobody. I ain't rock nobody, man. You feel me? This ain't got nothing to do with me. I shouldn't be here. This wife, you recall? I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. Do you recall? I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. Do you recall the text? I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. Do you recall the text? I'm ready to go back to prison. I'm ready to go back to prison. Do you recall when the tech asked you when you say big, like tall or fat? You said he's a little bit chubby. He's, he ain't fat, but he's chubby. And can you speak in the microphone so we can hear you? Yes, Your Honor. Am I speaking loud enough? My fault. Um, Mr. White, do you recall um, the tech asked ask you what kind of car were they driving? What kind of car does he drive? And you responded, they having different cars, but the one he uh, was driving was a Pontiac G6 Silver. Do you recall that? Man, that ain't got nothing to do with me. What are you talking about? Mr. White, do you recall telling This is me? not my case. This is not my case. Why is I'm here? This is not my case, man. Detective Dennis asked you what kind of car do you usually see him in, and you said that's the only car I've seen him in, because I... I haven't seen him recently. I ain't seen him recently. You, you know what I'm saying. And Tech Dennis asked you, I got you, so the guys... It must have been your car. Now, Mr. White, do you recall Tech Dennis asked you, so you guys are driving on their tail and you pull into the gas station. And you say you pull into the gas station. And he asked you, did you pull up next to each other, behind each other, or what? And do you recall that? This ain't got nothing to do with me, man. I don't recall nothing. <laughs> All I recall is going back to prison and doing my three years on my 10 year bid and go home. Now, Mr. White, do you recall responding to that? We didn't pull. He was on one side of the pump. He was on the other side of the pump. It was him. He had some girl driving. And it was two kids in the backseat in Carson. It was one other dude, one other dude who was with him. Both of them walked into the store. Do you recall that? Right? No. Do you recall uh, following up with your partner who got out of the store was driving, fixing to go in the store. The girl approached and was like, why was you all driving so fast? And my partner was like, he wasn't driving fast. I mean, that's how he normally drives, 40 miles per hour. So OG Bentley came and OG's Bentley's partner. Do you recall that? Listen, I don't pull the beer. I don't recall none of that. All I recall is going back to prison. I'm Mr. Atkins, uh, we need to take a comfort break. So yeah, sure. let's take about, let's take 10 minutes and then we'll see where the day leads us to that point, okay? All right, we're in recess. Our witness has left us. Um, 
I'm just curious as to time. That's all, because it's um, about 4:30. Yes, Your Honor. How much more do you have with this witness? Uh, Your Honor, I probably have uh, to lay the proper foundation for impeachment about an hour. Uh, because okay. Two, uh, so that, that's that's the state's all right. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, let me do this. Let's uh, when the jury comes back, we're going to recess for the day. And we'll come back tomorrow morning, pick up where we left off, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Um, counsel, is there anything I need to take up with you before we leave for the day? Uh, that we haven't taken up already? Uh, not on behalf of Mr. Williams. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to be in recess 10 minutes. We'll come back and then we'll recess. All right. All rise. Thank you. <laughs>
You know, don't come back till next week, okay? We, we, only in small doses, Mr. Botts, okay? Keep, keep your day job, <laughs> tip your waitress. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, You're welcome every day, so you know that. I just, yes. I just want to make sure I've made my objection. I've moved for severance. You have been kind enough to give me a continuing objection. I want to make sure that when you say to us um, any objection to states, um, you know, 42 BB or whatever it might be, that my continuing objection to this evidence coming in with regard to Mr. Nichols, number one, at all, and number two, without a 105 objection, is preserved. I know you've said it before. It's preserved, sir. I'll, I'll give you. I will make that a continuing objection. Thank you. Because I've denied your motion for mistrial and the yes. 105 instruction. Yes. Okay. Unless there's anything else, counsel, I will have you all come back tomorrow morning at 930, but I'll, I'll just go ahead and excuse the jury in just a second, okay? All right. Let's summon our jurors, please. We'll also bring... Um, Mr. White back tomorrow morning for okay. 930. Okay, yes. All right. Thank you, Sergeant Ingram. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached a natural stopping point, members of the jury, for today. Uh, it, the hour being almost uh, 5 o'clock or 10 minutes of 5. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and then release you all for the evening. I've excused our witness for the time being. He'll be back tomorrow morning. And um, so you'll need to be here for... Please arrive before 9.30 for an anticipated 10 o'clock start time. All right? Do you have any ministerial inquiry of me at this point? Okay, let's go through your um, ad nauseum admonitions. Remember, leave your notepads in the basket in the back. Please do not discuss anything that you have heard uh, as you are sitting back there or as you're walking in small groups, ones and twos, or when you get home or you're on any other means of conveyance. Um... Remember, it would not, it would be a violation of the court's admonitions for you to, for you to talk about what you've heard in this case. It would also be a violation thus far if you, if any, any third party or anybody tries to talk with you or in your presence or hearing about this case, if somebody should do so, um, Sergeant Ingram and myself need to know immediately. Uh, please, uh, also do not listen to any news accounts, blogs, or websites that may chronicle these proceedings. Again, that would be uh, inconsistent with the court's admonitions uh, to you. And, and also, don't go by and visit the scenes um, that may be depicted or you may have been shown. And please do not recap any testimony, handicap any witnesses, meaning talk about them as you sit back there waiting on us or at any point in time until such time as the court properly instructs you on how you're to consider this case. 
So, and ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you so much for your patience with all of us and the patience that you'll continue to show to us uh, as the case is being presented. So, ladies and gentlemen, unless you have any other inquiry, uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning for 930, and we'll get started shortly thereafter, okay? All right. All rise. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Our jury has left us. All right, counsels, unless you all have anything or any other business you need to take up with me, um, I will see you tomorrow morning for 9. The police arrive before 9.30. Once all of you and our jurors are present, we'll get started sometime between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Okay? All right, we're in recess. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.